Shaq News is not uh, verified for some reason. Shaq yeah. News is verified, Austin? Awesome. No, we're not verified. So we we're like the Rodney we Dangerfield of video game news websites. It's very true. <laughs> oh, man. These good people, they don't get no respect. No. The good people of Shaq News. Hello. It's Twitter. I, I have been playing Animal Crossing. That's the yeah. I visited your island. You did. Holy crap! Yeah. That's uh, it's my zone out game. What an interesting island it is. I built a three story library, Ozzy. I can tell nice. he's super into Animal Crossing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Blake and Ozzy are gonna die if we just talk about Animal Crossing. Is is that like a Jedi Pikachu back there? Oh, and, and Ozzy's uh, in his back. So I did the Pikachu at Build a Bear, and I'm just like, I'm gonna dress it like a Jedi. And, <laughs> and they're just like, Well, we don't know if it fits, sir. I'm like, I will make it fit, and I did. <laughs> there you go. Neither of those things are bears. Exactly. That's a misleading. They, they had jet. They had Jedi bears. They had like a dark, a black bear for Darth Vader. Or something. But yeah, they oh. had like all the cool Star Wars clothes, and it's like I'm gonna dress up my Pikachu like a Jedi. But yeah, I needed to redecorate a little bit for to freshen up the background just a tad. I like Baby Yoda. I'm I'm just sticking with the wall from E3 2018. A simpler time. I, yeah. I had I had Baby Yoda up front for a while, but I didn't want to remove it entirely, so I just put him in the back. You put Baby Yoda in the corner. Nobody puts Baby Yoda in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy did. You could just put a Baby Yoda on my... Nope, nothing. There we like, go. I'm just I looking around. There's a, there's a bunch of crap I could put back there like to freshen up the background now and then. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We could order you an Ikea shelf. A couple of Ikea shelves. Pop it on the wall, put some Amiibos up there. All the Amiibos are in the uh, are in the shelves. The Ikeas yeah. of Southern California are massive. They're like military yes. compounds. Yeah, they're, they're ginormous. Hmm. Like, I don't know where the nearest one is to you, Ozzy, but I'm sure it's like at least the size of 40 football fields. The thing with the Amiibos is you can barely see them. Like, I do have a toad back there that you can barely see. Uh-huh. Right, and this Lego Bastion that you can barely see. Do you see Joker was announced? I saw that. I'm going to get it because Joker is the best character in Smash, right? Yeah, like you'll never be able to use to use it for anything, but like it looks really cool. No, you can use it in Smash. You can besides Smash. I'm just saying, I, I have the Amiibo Training Academy to think about here. And it was I was one like... Duped into thinking you were talking about the Joker and I was super excited for both <laughs> You thought that, like, Joker from Batman was going to be a DLC character in Smash? Yeah. Yeah, no. I'd pick up the game again. I would be yeah, back. You make it like, like Silver Age Joker. No, Joker from Persona 5, who was announced at the Game Awards. Which is funny because there's still no Persona on Switch. Yeah, what's up with that? That seems like the perfect platform for a Persona e game. Everybody was like, well, Joker's in the game. They're going to put Persona on Switch eventually. And, like, no, they... Still haven't taken Persona off of PlayStation. I guess there's a they giant, put Golden on Steam, but there's like a giant dump truck of money that Sony comes up to their house with and just says, "Hey." Well, Sony backed a dump truck of money to Epic Store, so there's yeah. that. Or is it the other way around? I like how Sony floated money to Epic. It's not even God. It, it's because. Sony, the, the mega corporation, is still pretty big. Yeah. Like, it's not just PlayStation. Like, there's the camera company uh, where their sensors are used in, like, iPhone and stuff. And then there's, like... They have electronics life in general. They have a life insurance division. They still, yeah, they still make other stuff. Uh, there's the motion picture company. There's the music studio. Like, it's massive. Sony is, like was once a massive Japanese conglomerate that contracted, right? 
and now it's like grown again. So it is bigger than Epic. But I just think it's weird because the timing of it. Like, wouldn't you rather buy Epic Games stock before Fortnite Mania? Yeah. <laughs> like, Who saw that smart. coming? It's smart. Uh, Tencent did. It's That's smart right. on, on the part of Epic to sell on this current valuation. I get that. I still remember that first time I tried Save the World way back before they were even calling it Save the World. And I'm just like, is this game ever going to see the light of day? And <laughs> yeah. Who could have, who could have seen that? Who could have expected other than it, Tencent? I mean, I, I don't think Tencent thought that they were investing in Fortnite. I think they, they thought they were investing in Epic Games, which is the engine a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, but now the story is like, I've seen a lot of speculation that the reason the timing of this occurred is that Sony is about to bring a lot of their IP to PC and they're choosing to do it on the Epic Game Store exclusively. Which is funny because Horizon's going to Steam. Which is, yes. uh, And yeah, but uh, is is Guerrilla Games first party? Yes. Okay, Okay, so... It's more than first party. Like their their guy is his is heading uh, PlayStation now. Yeah. That, so yeah, they're, they're they're deep in the company now. So yeah, that is weird. And Death Stranding, a game that Sony published, right? Although it's published by Five Hundred Five, and Five Hundred Five all well. No, Five Hundred Five went to Epic for Control. So that that is kind of weird. Well, Death Stranding's on both platforms. It's yeah. on it's on Epic Game Store and Steam at launch. Like, I think Control's going to Steam next month. So David, down the road, maybe some Death Stranding in your in your in your life, like on a Steam sale, <laughs> two dollars. No, one dollar. Come on, re- Death Stranding revisited. I'm gonna gift it. I'm just gonna gift it to you. <laughs> okay, Can you're you just gonna have me? Death Stranding. Um, no, it's I, gonna repeat a Stranding game, a str- best Strand game. Yeah, best Strand game of the year is gonna be Death Stranding on PC again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see maybe putting it on sale, but honestly, I find like every part of that game like just completely repulsive from my taste. Like I have no interest in it whatsoever. It looks shinier. Which is so funny because it's they're, become they're, so prophetic. You know the monitor I'm talking about. Oh yeah. The, the one at the office. I mean I've seen good looking games though, you know. And this game on that monitor, something else. Hmm. And also the game hits different in twenty twenty, man. Contactless, contactless oh, delivery is a little less. more valid in 2020. Even less. Je- Jeff Keeley is a hologram, takes on a whole new meaning now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want anything remotely resembling what we're already going through in real life. That is anathema to video games for me. So that's why you're playing Animal Crossing. But, yeah, which is so funny because Animal Crossing is more of a real life simulator than anything else. If it anything, is- it's a post apocalyptic world where animal mutant human hybrids have taken over and forced humans to uh into some sort of indentured servitude to bring it's them basically like, like a timeshare currency <laughs> it's like kind of a timeshare yeah. scenario or kind of like a fire island scenario hmm. like i don't know it's it's weird because you are being brought to this island you can't go home you can only go to other people's islands on Dodo Airlines. There is some post-apocalyptic narrative that could be written about uh-huh. the universe of Animal Crossing New Horizon. I think it's fair to say that. Also, why is At least no, they have air travel. Why Animal, is, exactly. It's the only Animal airline mutants, I'll fuck with right now, Ozzy. Animal mutants are the dominant species for sure. There's Did you way guys more of see them. that Alaska Airlines flight? The, Which one? Oh, the the guy yelling about Jesus. Yeah, and, he's gonna and kill they had them to all? they had to do an emergency landing in Seattle. Yeah, because he yeah. wouldn't wear a mask. He was wearing a mask. He was he just was? yelling about how Jesus was going to kill him. He was going to kill everybody because of Jesus. He was going to kill everybody because of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I just wouldn't Christ. fly right now. When did I, they start serving bath saying. salts on Alaska Airlines? Yeah, like no know. more bath salts on Alaska Airlines, and like I. I don't know. I wouldn't fly right now. No. Would you guys fly no. right now? None of us are flying right now. Uh, banana. No, banana. I wouldn't fly. I would drive away. 
from things or two other things. Yeah. Like we've already said, we're skipping CES next but year. But nothing, nothing, yeah. uh, nothing is really open, so there'd be no, there'd be no point to driving around to things either. Yeah, it would just be to meet up with everybody else that we're going to throw down with in the, the zombie apocalypse, basically. It's basically you're going to have to, like, the people who live in denser populated areas are going to have to evacuate if the apocalypse yeah. continues to intensify. Basically. Imagine how I feel. I've been stuck in this house for about four months, and <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're breaking records every day, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, come on, stay home, people. Did you see that video of the two dude bros trying to hand out masks to people at Venice Beach? I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah, sad. Dumb. Like the, those kids are those kids were super polite about it. They were way more polite to all those people than hell I probably would have been. You know? They're like, yeah. bro, put on a mess, bro. Dude. And, and people are like, Jesus is gonna kill you. Like, I'm not gonna wear a mask. America, That's my freedom. freedom. Yeah. I people can't breathe. Have... I have a disability that makes me unable to wear masks. Do people understand freedom? I don't know. Yeah, your Walmart <laughs> is mandating masks finally? Yeah, Devil's line was supposed to make some sort of big announcement at 5:30. Also, did he? I don't know. It's so big that I can't find reports of it anywhere, even though it should have happened an hour ago. Well, twi- well, Twitter is borked, so he probably couldn't post it. Yeah, <laughs> it might have got drowned in the whole everybody retweeting the Bitcoin scam. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Mike Dewine, right? That's your boofer. He was supposed to make an announcement at 5:30. Thank you, disembodied hand. <laughs> <laughs> disembodied hand for the win. Yeah, Thing lives in my apartment. Now. Sweet. Uh, Thought disembodied hand in concert. He posted a tweet thread like 45 minutes ago. Well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, sorry, folks. Dead air, dead air. But the, oh, no, the governor of Ohio has spoken. And Ohio hit an all-time high in cases, like, what, two days ago? Yeah. Because we reopened, and we also reopened bars. And then we were like, no, let's do one better. Let's reopen strip clubs, too. A, <laughs> nor- a Northeast Ohio strip club is probably hey. the best thing to reopen during a pandemic. Please be sure to practice social distancing at your local strip club. Yeah, what the hell? Also, bars? How do you drink an alcohol? Get do you a drink lap alcohol? dance from six feet away. Yeah, six feet away <laughs> lap dances and, like, uh, drinking? <laughs> yeah. Do they have buff- – do, do, do these strip clubs have, like, buffets? Oh, God, Cause... no. I imagine the, the strip club Christmas. buffet is – You ever thing eaten of... at a strip club buffet? That's – No. 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 Even in the well, best of times, that's not okay, something you should well, do. Oh, wait. I have to – technically, I have because the Duke Nukem Forever press tour in Las Vegas. I'm afraid to ask about took, this. It took God. place in a strip club. I interviewed Randy Pitchford in a champagne room. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so at any rate, yeah, they served us dinner Did there. Did perform a magic show in there? No, thank goodness. I was young and innocent. I was uh, I was mostly just there to bug him about Borderlands. I think it, I think at that point it was two. No, was it? No, it was it Irrelevant. was uh, two. We interviewed him. That's what we need to know. Yeah, but yeah, I also I I guess that I technically ate. A buffet at a strip club because they had a buffet. Yeah, you ate the the food Chicago that was Twitter. catered from that that probably not from the, the strip club. This itself. is in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, that's like God. That would just be a COVID buffet, like yeah. in present day, uh, Brody. Yeah. yeah, I would not be about that life. No, but hey, it was a different time. Duke Nukem was still relevant. Yeah, and F Zero had come out. Yeah, but. I'm just saying, like, if strip clubs in Ohio are open and they have a buffet, that's like double whammy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was the whole point I was trying to get at. No, now, that, now we're I, living in a time where Duke Nukem comes to Switch and nobody bats an eye. Hey, I downloaded it. I didn't play it. I would hope so. It's only five bucks. I mean, why not? I downloaded it. I didn't play it. 
No. There's nothing, you know, it's just to have it. Just to say, well, I mean, uh, who among us haven't done that? Like, we got a, a bunch of us have, like, Steam games that we downloaded just for the sake of downloading. Uh-huh. A bunch of free games that we just got just because it's free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, just because it's free, you totally need it. Yeah. I have... <laughs> I have more games on my Steam account than I will probably ever play. Just not only from like humble bundles, free freebies, holiday sales, you yeah. know. Yeah. Except the ninety nine cents. Exactly. I yeah, think Dognos has gifted me like three or four games. Like I yeah, like that. There's we've like all, games like that that like I haven't played yet. We've all taken part in those ch- chatty giveaway threads. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That that happens a lot. Uh, so there's like, yeah. And then also in our line of work, you end up with a lot of codes at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Not to yeah, Paper no. Mario, but to other things. Yeah. yeah. Less important things. Oh Listen. yeah, we've 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 got we got like <laughs> Blake's got to have like a hell of a backlog at this point. Oh my like, goodness! Just for the last six months. You should see my PlayStation Four backlog alone. Ooh, which man. is which is handy because when it comes yeah. to you know Christmas time, you know Shack Miss. Shack. What about Octopath Traveler? Oh, oh man! God. Damn it! Ah, my, my, I'm my, just kicking myself. You so know hard what? You know still. what? You know what? We're gonna do after Rusty Claymore is done with uh, with Breath. When of you're the Wild. done with Breath of the Wild, <laughs> when does that happen? <laughs> So, <laughs> so 18 months from now, when the uh, pandemic's over, when does one, when does one finish Breath of the Wild? Because I'm one not more, even close. One more heart to the Master Sword. Oh, two more Divine Beasts. Yeah, and then we then we take on Ganon. No, how many more shrines? Oh, I uh-huh. really don't even. How many more? How many Korok there? seeds? Son, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still not finding... done with Breath of the Wild, and it's been three years. Yeah, I'm I'll never finish that game. So and that, the sequels, the sequels, gonna come out, and I still won't be done with Breath of the Wild one. Well, if you watched my stream yesterday, you'll know I found a bunch of Crack Rock seeds and gave them to the Crack Rock guy. You to went to you. You went to the guy, and he danced. Oh, he danced so good. <laughs> oh, he shook yeah. those maracas around. He was like, shakalaka. Yeah. He does say shakalaka. Shaka, rocket to me, shaka Khan, shaka Khan. I like it. Uh-huh. Shaka Khan, shaka Khan. Look at Yeah. Yeah. The best. I like that he's like, he's got the goatee. It makes me think he's like some sort of beatnik hip, hip. Oh, yeah. They're all, they're all hippies. All the the whatever the Korok people, uh-huh. and they're very happy to live under rocks. Apparently, it also yeah. reminds me of Samba de Amigo. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see definitely. That. Yeah. We need a spinoff like game. That. So uh, I know which... who... Octopath Traveler. Right. Going back to that, that makes me sad because I still remember getting the invite to the uh, gallery opening at I Am Eight Bit and. I got there just as they were handing out codes to everybody in attendance. I'm like, oh my god, I got a, I got a free copy. And then like I put it down somewhere when I got home, and it's gone. Like Aww. I don't know where it is. It's it's in the ether somewhere. But uh, yeah, I have no I have no Octopath Traveler code anymore. Yeah, Aww. I don't like I don't like codes that are written on physical mediums. And it's it was written on a p- strip of paper like this big. I hate that. Yeah. Why would you even do that? <laughs> Just you lose it. Yeah, just email it to me. Yeah, because then you get some. You have my like email. Me, loses it. You had my email. I'm at the event, right? Yeah. Just email yeah, exactly. it to me. Yeah. It's Maybe. like they want me to lose the piece of paper. And um, I, sh- I sure did lose I'm it. I'm there. I'm at the event. You have What's my email. What's the deal with events? <laughs> Why not just I mean, come on, guys. Member events. <laughs> <laughs> we should start the show. Blake, do you want to sing about events? Boom. But no, no, you should just do I'll just do the Seinfeld thing. The you Seinfeld base. Seinfeld about events really quickly. Yeah. That'll be it. Boom. 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 Events. There you go. Welcome to the Shackcast, the official Shack News podcast. Oh, Shack News. I'm your host, Awesome God of CEO Editor Chief. Chief Puppy Wrangler, and I'm doing that right now, right here. That's right head. See it? Oh, look at Lola, that the chairpet of the board, joining me, making a long trek across my house from her room to my home office. 
you actually P-P-Y. joined me this week. You ain't got uh, no alibi, you puppy. Yeah, no, beaming uh, to me so. through a series of tubes. Uh, two people from California, one from Ohio, all through the internet. It's almost like, you know, this is the, the way that we're going to have to do things forever. But I hope not. Uh, uh, David, not making the long trek anywhere. Can't. Nope. What was the name of your vehicle? Did it, did it have a name? Um, I probably can't say it on air. It's pretty Damn. cool. Yeah. But, okay. uh, yeah, the transmission died, so I'm going to lease or buy a new one in the next week or so. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be fun during a pandemic. Yeah. Car lots at least sales get little things like car maintenance. Like I was supposed to get an oil change back in May, and we're like in mid July, and I was like, well, I haven't gone anywhere, so <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. the urgency? I was in the same boat. I got my oil change like a week before my transmission died, so you know. Ugh. Woo. It's almost like oh man. Yeah, yeah and it gets a, but how old is that car? I think it was a ninety eight. And my father-in-law built it from scratch, and it was free, so I got my money's worth, you know. Yeah, one more day till retirement. Yeah, um, that's not uh, bad though. No, it's not. Like you know, what I mean, that's like exactly as old as F Zero X. Yeah. Ooh, everything's retiring and dying. You know, it's fun. You know, it's funny is you you weren't <laughs> you were pretty sure, Asif, that you weren't doing a late night army this week, but you know, you got to do it for I, the F Zero anniversary. I saw. Yeah, I saw. I saw a bunch of F Zero Twitter tweeting about f-zero x anniversary and i'm like damn i gotta do something and it was french independence day i was like oh shit oh the french love about, Captain falcon french what about love f-zero x late morning army i just think good morning cleveland or good morning internet would be good i like that idea good morning internet <laughs> There you go. With uh, Everybody else has a morning show. Why not us? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got Ozzy. Uh, we got we got we got David here. He's our long reads editor. We got Ozzy, our senior Hello. editor. Uh, also, the guy that gets all the emails from everyone that I don't get emails from. We so, call yeah, him. How, yeah, well, we were just talking about this. How many emails do you get that I don't get anymore? Like you we, hear from a bunch of people, and I'm just like, hey, these people stop writing to me. Yeah. I. I don't it, know. it now goes both ways. Yeah, I know, but you're still like the longest running email in most PR databases for Shaq News. <laughs> Maybe David. I don't know. What was your email originally when you were here, David, in 06? Did you have a Shaq email? Uh, let me check. Because, hold on. I don't know if I did. I might you probably were just using what? your Gmail. Yes, it was David at ShackNews.com. Because at the time I worked here, there were only four of us. Yeah. <laughs> so it was Steve, Martin, Chris, or David at ShackNews.com. Oh, okay. So you did have an email. Well, Steve Steve really wasn't running a two-bit operation at all. I mean, I don't he never said he was. He had a Shack email for the first year or so. Yeah. He was like, oh, you don't have one of those yet? I'm like, no, man. So he, he was like, oh. And then like two minutes later, he had one set up. So that was just like that. And then and that's the story. Of- and then fresh off of reviewing a game this week, our reviews editor, Blake Morse, also beaming to us from California. Oh, yeah, Cowabunga, dude. We got, we got California shown on, like, northern and the southern side. So we, got, we yeah. got all of California except for that middle part that generates, like, what, a bunch of It's mostly COVID farmland. <laughs> farmland cases. and COVID cases, yes. Oh. I was like, "What is Merced? What would you describe that? Is that a? Are these are these farm towns? Right? Is that fair to say?" Actually, I'm in no position to be laughing because I'm pretty sure Los Angeles is going to break another record today. So mm. we're Ooh, number one. Congratulations! Well, things have gotten worse since our last episode. Oh man, I feel like we could every... say that every episode. When did we last do an episode? We did one so long ago, I forgot to upload it. So I'm going to give people a double dose of episodes this week. Ooh, I know. For me. You'll be able to listen to it during your car drive to... Oh, wait. Yeah, no one nah. does car drives anymore. So now they I listen to us while they drives? do their chores. You car drive. I mean, like, yeah, you... Sure. Like, I had to go... I took Lola to the vet, right? That's like a 20-minute drive or whatever. I, I had to do that. 
yeah. uh, this week. But yeah, like, I don't know. David, our town's not very spread out. Like, you can you can hit up, like, four stores if you need to and, like, drive, like, five miles. And that's yeah, like our, our town is kind of laid out like a soap opera town where everything is just really close together. And it's that song, you know, the Dead Kennedys, This Can Be Anywhere. Like, it's, yeah. it's about Canton, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if there was going to be a show about Canton, Ohio, it would be called The Strip. And it would be about people who work on The Strip or who come to shop at The Strip. Companies that go bankrupt. On The Strip. On The Strip. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, uh, speaking of bankrupt companies in Canton, you know Lake Cable Nursery? Yeah. Gone. Really? Yep. And have you seen what they did to the golf course? Yes. They, they have – we had this hill. Like, it's just weird. Like, we had this, like – It was the perfect sledding hill. It yeah. was. It was, yeah. like, an amazing sledding hill. Yeah. And this company has bought all the land now, and they have demolished. And yeah, I drove by there one day, and there was just a big gaping hole. Like, they just – gutted it and now it's just piles of dirt with heavy duty equipment scattered around so they are they they're now starting to show a sign that says join meyer in you know as like a member of this commercial real estate property so it's a strip mall and meyer is guaranteed to be part of it here's the interesting part for me meyer tends to have tesla superchargers and tesla superchargers are free for my green Tesla. So in theory, if that Meyer opens up and it has a charger, I could charge that car for free, like two miles away from my house. Oh, that's nice. For the rest of the life of the car. Yeah, that's uh, that'll be nice then. When is it supposed to open? This year? Because why bother? It would have. I, to I don't even know. <laughs> like, why are they doing this? This is oh my, my point. God. Like, that's, why do we that's need the to motto. dig? Like why are we? That's the motto doing for why anything this year. Why bother? Like, <laughs> why? No, but like they're like going fast. Whatever the hell they're doing, it's been like rapid pace with yeah. the, with like what they're doing. And I'm like, this is crazy. Why are you trying? Like, I guess they really want to open a Meyer right now. Yeah, and like yeah. Meyer is basically like Walmart. It's open 24 hours a day a lot of the time. I don't, I don't think I've ever been to a Meyer. Where's the closest Meyer to us? Is there uh, even one in Canton? I don't think there is. I don't know. I went to Michigan and and there's all they're all over the place there. Huh. Uh, and uh, I the they're I've more only present. ever been to the one in Illinois. Yeah, they're they're in Illinois, they're in Indiana, they're in parts of Ohio and they're really they're in Michigan too. Uh, but yeah, the one I used to go to was in Ann Arbor. Uh, but yeah, like this, having one in Canton, I'm like, we don't need it. No, we don't. <laughs> it's like, we have like abandoned strip malls in this town. Why are we building another strip mall? No, here's the thing. Like I could, I kind of get the logistics because it's far enough away from the strip that like where I live, I would probably go to a Meyer rather than fight the traffic on Frank and Dressler and Portage. And go but, to Walmart. And it's also, it's also a company that isn't Walmart. There's, it, there's that. But the thing is, they're going to have to like expand Fulton. Because if this place becomes hopping, can you imagine the backlog of traffic? It's at the... It's already creating a backlog. Yeah, the corner of Hills and Dales where I live and Fulton. And it's already pretty packed there. You know the Hell is Real building? Yeah, yeah. They're gonna yeah. have to take all that shit out. Oh, too bad. And it, give us. <laughs> I want to shoot giant... a music video in front of that building so badly. Like, like awesome. it is. Uh, it do literally do. just says "Hell is real" in like red it's letters this on this like fire. old looking barn. Yeah, like hell is real. Only Jesus can save you. That's yep. like old school, like Old Testament Christian scare tactics right there. <laughs> like, walk with Jesus, and you will fucking burn for eternity yes yeah, so it's like right across the street from this new strip mall yeah nice <laughs> so i'm just like that's like the setting of a dead rising game or something it seriously is becoming that man like i, I, I don't know when i leave the office at night it definitely feels like i'm in death like in a zombie game <laughs> dude no dude i went out for the first time 
in a long time last weekend because like a, I blew a fuse in my apartment, mm-hmm. and it was like later. It happened later in the evening, so like I was like, oh, well, like the only place open right now is Target, so I'll go to a Target, and it was like the most empty I have ever seen a Target, and every very few people were there. Everyone was wearing masks. Thank goodness, Oakland takes its, its shit seriously. That's good. I'm happy to say. Um, I mean, it's weird because we've had corona. We're having a corona spike in Alameda County. But I looked at the numbers, and I mean, we've done pretty damn well. We've had, like, uh, we've only had 156 deaths for, like, a, and, like, 60,000 infections overall or something like that. I can't remember it, but I remember seeing the numbers they were they were lower than i thought they'd be but we're still seeing like a spike right now after they reopened uh restaurants and stuff like that i think that's the problem was the reopening was premature like no one listened to the guidelines and now here we are that's that's also a a few weeks after most of the protests happened yep but Everyone was every, – nobody was socially distancing. People were wearing masks um, for the most part, though, You know, at least here. I but... the, the protests have not been as big a source of new coronavirus cases as – because if you look at the protests, a lot of people are wearing masks. They're not social mm-hmm. distancing, but they are wearing masks. Yeah. Uh, it's other things, like the Trump rally in Tulsa. Like, it's also outdoors. Also, All the protests have been outdoors versus yeah. uh, the things Indoor that have really rally. been spreader events yeah. are churches where people are singing, concerts, like stand-up comedian uh, events, yep. uh, indoor events, right? Restaurants uh, and bars. Right, like those are yeah. the those are the real spreader events. So you're right in the sense that protesters didn't get hit as bad, mm-hmm. but I I don't know. Like, did you see how big the Houston protest for George Floyd was, or yeah. the multiple ones have been? Yeah, it's impossible to socially distance, and like if someone coughs on you, you're yeah. gonna be exposed to the virus. So like, also the police were rounding people up and they were throwing them all like in close quarters so yes there's that too there were the people in you know what ozzy that's a really good point because one of ohio's biggest hot spots was a jail you know and like yeah it's because we densely populated areas you're gonna have more spread yeah uh so yeah and i think it's really embarrassing because if we wore masks we probably wouldn't be in this scenario right now. If everyone was socially distancing and everyone was wearing masks, we wouldn't be here. But it's because this now. is where we are, like, and I, I, I think that we, I'm not saying it's possible to socially distance at a bar. I don't think that. I don't think bars should have been open during a pandemic. I think that was a stupid idea. It's like, you can buy alcohol and drink at home. And I know it's different, right? But it's like, that's not essential. Like there was a whole there was a whole effort in March and April over focusing on what was essential. And for a moment, I feel like our society had clarity as that these are the things that matter. And then it became I need to get mine again. And yeah. my business and I'm going to go out of business and this, I can't pay my employees and like it just became this whole domino but I, I don't think that our motivation to reopen was smart. If you go back and you look at the Spanish flu, they opened prematurely. They reopened prematurely. And yeah. they saw a bigger spike. So history repeats itself. It's, it's difficult because I, I try not to be – I think the world is becoming increasingly binary, especially because of, um, of social media. Uh, things are either the best or they're, you know, a dumpster fire or you're, the, you know, you're great or you're terrible. Like, I, I understand that people are hurting financially and that businesses need to reopen. But I think what a lot of people, taking politics out of it, people are just kind of scared and they're being short-sighted. Like, if you run a bar, you're hurting and you need to reopen. But if you do reopen, uh, even if you're smart about it, 
you're probably just going to have to close it again because it's going to be in a, you know, the coronavirus cases will increase, things will be even worse, and then you will go out of business. So I've, I've tried to sympathize and empathize with people, but then there are, there are those people who are kind of the America, my freedoms, and I'm going to reopen and I'm not going to wear my mask. I mean, there is, uh, Asif, I don't know if you heard about this, but there's a guy from Ohio who died on July 4th. Uh, this was making the rounds on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, I saw the meme. So, yeah, and it, like I looked it up, and it's real. And it's like that's the kind of person who's like, he's like, fuck this, I'm not wearing a mask. I've made it so far. He goes to a big pool party. He's like, LOL, it's not that fact. The next graphic is him posting a status update, like, man, COVID sucks. I can hardly breathe. And then the next slide is his obituary. And like people like that, I don't want to say fuck them, but you have people like that who are endangering everyone else. That's so it, my concern, is yeah. that, like, it's not, I'm worried that, like, I'm going to have a friend or a family member in a city that doesn't have hospital capacity because of one of these idiots, and then they're going to get sick for no fault of their own, you know, just randomness, because this is, like, one of the most infectious diseases of all fucking time, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, it's like, I, it's really you know you said you said like you try not to think in in like that binary way i think what's insane is that scientific facts or like scientific evidence right is being debated in that manner on social well, media to, 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 to distill that further it's becoming a political issue when it's not at all yeah this is this is a this is a global health crisis politics should never have been brought into it you know like masks for example have been politicized and they shouldn't be wear a mask because you're safe and then the president says i'm not wearing a mask by the way you know guess who started wearing a mask and uh and now you know his follower I mean, if you're in a position of power especially the position of power you're going to influence people and so i really feel like uh it's like chris gerard our, our shaka or chris gerard said that, you know trump should be held accountable for uh criminal negligence uh, I don't remember the exact charge, but that, that sort of thing where him just saying, like, this is a hoax, he's definitely responsible for a lot of this spread. And people have to take responsibility for themselves. But again, when you're in a position of influence like that. It, it yeah, might, the, when you're the freaking president. But, yeah, some of this it has to be laid at, at your feet, you know. Uh, then, well, right, everything they're doing is the opposite, though. They, they constantly are trying to refute Dr. Fauci's credibility in yeah. the past week. Yeah. And they just they just directed hospitals to no longer report cases to the CDC yeah. to report directly to them so that they can Where manipulate they the data. It. Like yeah, yeah. It's like you can't put your head in the sand and make this thing go away. It's insane. No. I don't know. It's just it's, it's crazy. A fucked up world. This world. This whole COVID nineteen terrible. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty god awful. Yeah, like, let's just hope this Xbox event isn't the worst thing ever. That's I, next week, right? Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, same. I don't know if we want to talk about what you guys hope to see. I'm hoping we see Fable Four. That's been the one Xbox property that's always gotten me excited. I've always described it as Zelda with armpit farts. Yeah. I just want a, a big, colorful world to explore right now. I'd be totally down with me. I, to that, I think, to that like, extent, though, I kind of want a Banjo-Kazooie game that's actually worth half a shit. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. A Fable game would be cool. Uh, they're definitely working on it. It's the people that do uh, Forza, or not, uh, Horizon, the... the What's the Horizon? Uh, Playground? Yeah. What are you saying, boy? Yeah, the people that do that series for Xbox. Forza Horizon? Yeah. yeah. They've been working on Fable, a Fable game for like a couple of years now. So I think it'll be another year or so before well, we hear yeah, about the next I just, Fable. I just want to see it. They I, I should just show logos months. of games. Yeah. I mean, guys, we all know Crackdown 4 is the ultimate next-gen game. Nah. They're going to announce like on. Gear 6. Like, that's coming. I'm yeah, dying. Crackdown 4. I can only hope that they run with another killer instinct and give Iron Galaxy a chance to actually start from the beginning and have a game that's not plagued with, for a year by terrible marketing where they had so many hills to climb in yeah. that first year that just started with like 
like, oh, it's an Xbox exclusive with that got tangled with the terrible marketing of the Xbox one at the beginning Mm -hmm. and then the whole free to play thing and then everything else. People were so turned off by it for the first year. And it's a game that's won people over gradually year after year with like, with like the cool characters, the cool ideas, the cameos, uh, Combos. The, the Mick Gordon soundtrack, like there's there's so many cool things about that game, and I want Iron Galaxy. Iron Galaxy deserves like all the props in the world for making that a cool fighting game, and they deserve a chance to start fresh with something yes. with their vision. You know, Asif, you've said in the past that I don't know if this has changed, but your favorite fighting game to watch is that Dragon Ball Z game. I don't remember what it's called. It was Fighters. Yeah, Fighters. That, My favorite that, fighting game to watch by far is KI 2013. I've yeah. loved Killer Instinct. It's so much fun. It's the first one, and man, I could watch that game all day. It mm-hmm. is so damn cool. Yeah, it, that I, was just my favorite at that Evo. At, at that Evo. Clarify I, that. that. I feel was... like KI 2013 should be subtitled KI Particle Effects. Like, I just love mm-hmm. the particle effects in that game. I love the counterbreaker that's probably my favorite uh announcer bark like i would love a new ki it's time i still i i still think of that first time it was shown off at that evo and people it was booed out of the building and like people weren't giving it a chance or anything and it grew so much since then like it it won it won a lot of naysayers over and you know what they did a great job with it and they did they did I, I hope I hope they get another shot. I mean, there's been a campaign for like a year now saying hashtag bring back KI and come on, we've got a new console coming, so let's do it. Start over. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want cool. something that shows off the console, like that isn't yeah. necessarily just another shooter. And that's why I like you know, yeah. like one of the coolest things from the PS5 reveal was Ratchet and Clank, right? So I kind of yeah. want them to wow me with with something similar. But man, if they did something like bring like Blast Core back or something, that would be fun. Ooh. Like ha- dumb... have Rare bring back one of the, its dead IPs. Yeah, like have a like, fun dumb video game come back, and it's like, I don't know. I think that could be what, good. What if they made something that was like Donkey Kong Country, but it's not Donkey Kong Country? That's ukulele like... uh, too. Oh yeah, I guess so. Um, it's not much like, super the first hard. One. But it's definitely Ukulele Two is definitely a side scroller DKC inspired game. I feel like that's what Platonic does that's is kind true. of make inspired <laughs> games inspired by Rare. Which good on yeah. them for like taking all the criticism from the first one and yeah. pivoting and going, okay, well we have this idea now, and they made it the second one a lot better. Oh, for sure. The first Ukulele not fun at all. The second one actually kind of good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> So, like, the one game we know exists for Xbox Series X is Halo Infinite, right? Yeah. And I just don't – I want it to not suck. I have so yeah. many questions, but they're all surrounding the multiplayer, and those aren't the answers we're going to get next week, so. Yeah, I know. That's the other problem, Ozzy. That's, like, all I care about. Like, everyone's like, oh, my God, the story of Halo. I'm like, there's a story in Halo? <laughs> I, I'm aware Master of the story Chief in saves Halo, the but day, kills thing. <laughs> but like, I I, I want to see. I want War Zones to come back. Like, I loved that part of Halo Five. That was really cool. Like the the whole world building element and everything else. Like, I enjoyed that. Honest question: um, Do we think, subjectivity aside, objectively, are Halo and Gears kind of played out? Is it time for Microsoft to come up with a new marquee action franchise? I think given how quickly Gears 5 was out of our minds, like, I would say that it's it's over. I think Gears is done. I think Halo is not done. Do you Halo think Infinite has, will be the litmus test for that? Yes. I think Infinite, I just think Halo, I still love Halo 2. Yeah. And, same. like, I'll never stop loving Halo 2. And, like, that was a movement. That was, like, a big moment on console. Yeah, I don't think like the goodwill from that just disappears. Like that people franchise, people still get excited. Like Halo yeah. Three came out of Master Chief Collection, and people got excited for it. Exactly. But on so the I other like... on the other side of it, it's like Asif, did you know Gears Five had an update until I showed you the link? No, <laughs> and I never beat it, and it's the only Gears I didn't beat. Because holy shit, I cannot stand that Kate story arc. It's awful. It's terrible. Like so bad. 
I was like, what? You're doing what now? She's who? No. I just noped. I dropped my controller, and I noped out of the game. I've this never was, noped out of a game so hard in my life. This was strike two for you for Gears, right? Because last in Gears 4 was the robots, and you didn't The know robots that. made horde mode horrible. It's like, oh, great. I'm shooting, I'm shooting steel. I think that... <laughs> like, with a bullet. Like, I just... As someone who, like, had kind of played... I played both IPs. I liked Gears 1 and 2. 3 was the best. Uh, I liked Halo 1 and 2. I thought 3 was okay. That's kind of where I fell off. But, like, I just don't see people getting excited about those IPs like they used to. No. And I think... I, I, I think that there's... In a new action... Like, a new marquee action franchise. Because They should have I mean, made... COD, they put uh, Dave Bautista as part of the main cast. COD was not even in the mix when Halo 2 and 3 were relevant. Yep. It's like the the fervor over halo as a shooter peaked at three and then maybe reach well you bring up a good point halo 3 came out roughly two months before cod 4 and that's when that was the next watershed moment you know yes yeah. so i feel like that's what happened is that a lot of the people moved over to cod yeah and right now Warzone is a thing if halo which they said they're not going to have a battle royale Halo Infinite without a Battle Royale is kind of insignificant. And also you it, have to pay for it. It so seems like, like a no infinite is a lot. It's like just endless number. You know? And the name is right and there. The, no Battle Royale. Halo Infinite is the perfect name for Halo Battle Royale. That's, yeah. That's all I'm saying. I think they should focus heavily on the multiplayer experience. Like it should be, it should be like overwhelming in options. And it's not going to be like if gonna... they made it an MMO like Planet Side or, or you know, something along those lines. You know what yeah. I don't get is like now or that like Destiny. Why? Like borrow why, a little from Destiny, which is ironic why in so many is ways. Co-op always just for players. Like we live in a world where people play like massive games with tons of people online. It would be cool. I mean, see Big Team Battle like, has eight people, but it's not co-op. But I would like yeah. to see like an eight-player co-op. Like that'd be you're cool. You're talking about a co-op campaign, Blake, right? Like, yeah. Well, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, get get people together for a raid the way you would for WoW or something like that, and get like eight players together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a better like if you took the ODST formula and you made it just bigger, that would be fun. Yeah. I think like there's there's things that they've done right in the past that they could do right again. I just fear that they're, they're what the creative director quit and like the lead designer quit like a year oh, ago. The pro- oh, as far as the project being snake bit, uh, that's yeah. a possibility. Yeah, and it's like Halo Five was not good. It wasn't. <laughs> it was like it was it was just mediocre, and it launched extremely poorly twice. Once on console and once on PC, like it, I don't know, man. Like they're... I really liked, uh, I really liked War Zones, but I think I'm the one because there are so many free to play elements for a sixty dollar game that War Zone just left a sour taste in people's mouths. That's my point. Is that this game free to play? Huge, but sixty dollars? You're like, mm, not anymore. Maybe seventy. <laughs> Maybe. Oh my 70. god. Yeah. Let's talk Thanks, about 2K. that real quick. Seventy dollars. I don't. I don't have a problem with it. Um, yes, you do, because they're still no, gonna microtransaction I, the shit out of us. Yeah, that's the thing. If it was another game, if it was something like Horizons, like the Horizon sequel, or if it's something like the God of War sequel, but you're doing it for NBA 2K, where you know they're gonna nickel and dime you anyway. But you know that, that's why people are so upset with seventy dollars. Pe- yep. People are upset because it's something we're upset about. People still pay the microtransactions on that shit. I'm work. upset, Ozzy, because I want to buy the Kobe one, and that's going to cost even more. But then I'll, have, then I'll have the Kobe and Shaq cases, and I can put them next to each other. But I don't know. I, I that's an abusive relationship. The 2K community is in almost as bu- ab- an abusive relationship as the Nintendo community. Or F Zero fans. Specifically. I mean, mo- moving back to the seven dollar price point, I I don't know. Like, you can see how much game development costs. Like a ten dollar hike after over ten plus years of paying sixty 
I don't I don't see that as a, a big ask. Honestly. It is because these companies are printing money. It's not like they're losing. It's not like their margins are bad. They they publicly disclose their margins and they're great. Which and they're actually improving because they don't sell approved. packaged goods anymore. Which There's something like the digital storefront. Which companies also? EA, Activision, Sony, Microsoft. So all those software companies. That's four. But there are other AAA developers who won one two. Swap. Sorry, take two interactive. Like sure. specifically the 2K company. Like reporting record earnings. What, and then right doing now? like Doing this on the backdrop of record earnings, I think, is just dubious. Uh, I don't know. I think that dovetails. Like, if if next-gen development is as expensive as people are saying, I just see it as a a natural... uh, No, maybe. It is. Like Okay, if that's true, then they're doing this to maintain their profit margin. Sure. Why wouldn't you? So I have an interesting question. So in a year, if, if... we will have to look at the profit margin of Take Two Interactive EA year over year. Okay, and if do. their margins have gone up, this has been this has been magumbo and full of shit. If if their margins remain the same, then that argument is fair. That they're I have, just a, I have a fascinating question to think about: Is do people pay seventy dollars for the next Call of Duty when Warzone is out there and it's no, free to play? no Warzone's the shit now. Like that game has like fifty million people playing it. It's like crazy big. Call of Duty is still going to sell 5 million plus copies, especially on a new console. I think it's not going to break records anymore, though. When I think the there. game that's going to break a record this year is Madden. Because if there's no Which real is so sports... Funny it's the same game. No, because there, if there are no... If there's no football this fall, guaranteed that's, that game's going to sell record amounts. You believe there's football this fall? I don't. No. I don't, I, I, he's saying he, they probably won't be, which is why Madden yeah. will sell. No. Yeah, I mean, no football. That's what I'm saying. Like, since there yeah. is no football, it's going to happen. I think that Madden is going to sell better than it usually does, because mm-hmm. like that's a game that is that there is no free to play version of it, right? But COD might have they might have they might have hurt themselves, Ozzy. It's a it's a valid point to make. I think why it'll do well is it's going to be this. It'll be on PS4, Xbox One, and smart delivery or whatever, and on PC. And they're probably going to just do Black Ops. So people love Black Ops. And it's different enough from Warzone. I personally feel like Black Ops jumped the shark with uh, with uh, Black Ops 3, but that's just me. Well, that's what I think. They're, they're going to reboot it, too. <laughs> there, there, there was a reason that there was no campaign in uh, Black Ops 4, and that's because the campaign for Black Ops 3 was so awful. It was fucking terrible it was like nonsense it was going to like like supernatural dark magic shit and like what the hell is this oh. like what does this have to do with the military with call of duty <laughs> oh, magic no. such space nonsense magic. i just i remember call of duty space magic and i was like okay advanced warfare i was like yeah i'm good that's funny to think always... like a single player <laughs> campaign is what put call of duty on the map in the first place yeah no. But then now Modern Warfare it's... brought it back, and yeah. see, so yeah, if if ever if if this if this Halo getting back to Halo Infinite, if this Halo Infinite trailer is just story, uh, big big snore from me. Yeah, oh, they're, Halo. They're emphasizing uh, campaign, and I couldn't tell you anything about the Halo Five campaign personally. No, isn't Mister Chef trying to get back his cyber girlfriend? Still. Is trying to find Cortana. I don't even know if she it. came back. Like yeah, she probably did. Either. I don't even know it. That's true. That could have happened. What was I, and what? There was some Nathan Fillion shit or something. Well, he like, was an ODST, and he came back in five, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What was he doing in five? What was that all about? Oh, because 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 Mister Chef is a fu- it's a fugitive in five. That's oh, right. so he's hunting down. Guy. He's like okay. A little bit of the story is coming back to me. He's a fugitive <laughs> because he's like out. Tr- I think because he's out trying to find something mysterious that turns out to be Cortana or something like that. I don't know. In a world with Master Chief as a fugitive I would, for some reason, <laughs> I would say that I'm down to replay that campaign. But there's so much coming down the pipe and so much that I'd rather replay. And like I will Death Stranding I, on I, PC. 
I, I, and I won't lie, I've fallen back into the uh, Mario Maker multiplayer rabbit hole. So. Oh really? <laughs> multiplayer? All it right. hasn't lagged for me as much. Really? Lately. Yeah. It's it, okay. It's bad in a lot of places, but it's not as bad as it was before. Wow. Like instead of an F, it's like a D plus. So you, yeah. you haven't you haven't played any single player maps? I have not played your level yet, Oz. <laughs> Blake, you I'm haven't played it, it, have you? <laughs> Just in the tournament. Just no, in the tournament. That's not the level. No, not the no. Level. That was horrible. Level was eight, painful. briefcase level eight. Are we talking so David. about David? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have you been playing briefcase level eight? I haven't played it in a good week or so, and I think really, you know really. Why? I'm gonna go back to it. I think the clown car part at the end is a bunch of bullshit, dude. Ozzy, can you operate a clown car? I know how the clown car works. Yeah. And I know that if you hit a spike with the clown car, it goes all cattywampus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing I know about the clown car. That's that's not platforming. You you completely threw off the theme of your level there, alternating between platforming and boss fight. I did not. It's like with Patrick Klepik and the music boxes. Like those you, are his weakness, and the clown car is your weakness. You really. specifically said. I want this. I want a sequel to Briefcase Level Five, my most notoriously difficult level. And in that level, there are parts that are super unnecessary and <laughs> arbitrary and stupid. <laughs> so dumb, like garbage. The spikes. In Can we Briefcase put all these level quotes five? in a trailer or something? Yeah, Good. Greg, if you're <laughs> listening, put all these quotes in a trailer. Briefcase Level Five has that that if you don't line up perfectly that spike hits you yeah how is this any different because that you find the sweet spot and you're good this i did exactly what you said to control the count the clown car i still bounce up hit the spikes which causes me to bounce down again float back up hit the spikes and die, <laughs> and die. yeah that's great so I, I actually think this is a good level up until then it is better than briefcase level five uh, and, then the cloud, and then the clown car makes the clown shoes. It's just so terrible. So dude. here's a story. I got to I this level. The clown car just in general is such bullshit. Although that's part <laughs> oh, of the fun. I will say that it's, it's like yeah. a good kind of bullshit. It's it it makes it fun a lot of times. It's a nod to Super Mario World, one of my favorite games ever. You know the what final else? Final boss battle. World? The Koopa Kids. Huh? There's your nod to Super Mario World. You can no. take no, out. no, no. That final boss battle with the Koopa car, the Koopa clown car and Bowser and the and the Mecha Koopas. That's Bowser Jr., dude. I know. Bowser Jr. Imagine what you have to fight for Bowser. I will say that I love the reinvention. You haven't even gotten to Bowser yet. No, I That's haven't. That's why. So here's here I just want cuz that the Koopa clown car BS as you call it. Yeah. It wasn't there. I, it was the last thing I added. I remember texting you. I'm like, I'm going to add more fire and more spikes. <laughs> I remember that text. Because I was like, I felt like it was too easy that you, well, you got to Bowser Jr. in like two days. Yeah. And now you can't get past this one thing. I'm just saying, like, it's like I put it there for a reason. <laughs> for the it's like, memes if it, it's yeah. like that first jump it's the first the first jump in the level if you can't make that first jump you can't finish the level you i know? think and some is. people can't finish that first jump and they just I know. they straight up quit i think it is a great level up until the clown car part you're wrong the clown car part is why it's a great level no no it is not yeah. That <laughs> part that takes almost six minutes to reach is not the reason why that's a great level. I have I have optimal strategies up until then though. You should see me just dissect the bosses. And yet you can't how have you not like you haven't figured out a way to practice the clown car? I could I, I thought about it. I then I had to build a library at Animal Crossing. <laughs> no, no. Gotta beat your level. So, yeah. Gankor hasn't no. finished it yet. What does that tell you? Because that dude's better than I am. It's soul crushing, is what it tells you. This level is evil. 
It is evil. You called it the bad place, and you're right. It's it is my bad place. It's DM. It was a DM four. Yeah. <laughs> I made. I finally made my equivalent of the quake level DM four. The bad place. It is. There's a bunch of lava. It's yeah. just. I'm still waiting for that last season of The Good Place to show up anywhere. <laughs> oh, on, on a bit well, of an you aside. missed out, man. It was on. You just, uh, yeah. It was on Hulu. What they last year? I paid thirty or bucks for this, this stupid year. Peacock service, thinking that that the last season of The Good Place would be on there. Nope, none of them. That doesn't make like, sense. And they streaming services have jumped the shark. Fuck Peacock. And they pulled it from Netflix. It hasn't been pulled from Netflix, but apparently it's not showing up to Netflix until like late August. And it's like, yeah. come on. Uh, stuff always shows up like when the new seasons of stuff starts. But there's to no remind new season people. Of good place. The, the good place. Yeah, season, but it's still on the for a couple months. Like it's earlier. not like it's not like the CW shows where they air the season finale and then everything shows up on Netflix a week later. No, with the net the NBC shows, it just shows up like four or five, like three, four months later when it's like time for new seasons of shows, which there probably won't be this year because you know it's 2020 and we're all in hell. So True. we still have something to watch. At least we get the boys season two. Which I hope you enjoy it, because who know, the hell knows when we're getting season three. Man, I just I just was watching The Tick. Uh, I couldn't bring night. myself to finish The Tick because I know it gets canceled, and I'm just like, God, why it's am I going to do this to myself? Every it really is great. Is I love that first season. The second season is just good. as good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm sad I know, they got canceled. I can't, I can't How take can a they be a trillion dollar company and they had to cancel the tick? Yeah, you're Amazon. You have more money than God. How yeah, are you going like, to cancel, just cancel being a show like the at tick? This point. Like, why you got to yeah. cancel the tick? There's plenty of money over there. They could have yeah. financed the tick. Agreed. It's like, they could have financed that uh, instead of the Dr. Disrespect deal that they signed. <laughs> <laughs> and we still don't know why he got banned. <laughs> There's some good memes for that. I don't care anymore. I, cared I never like cared to begin time. with. <laughs> yeah. I cared like the day it happened and everyone was like, oh, he might have diddled some kids or something creepy. I think the weirder thing is that Anti is still streaming. Yeah, what the fuck? Have you seen this shit, Ozzy? I've seen it because a- <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say too much, cause, but apparently I'm still following him on Twitter for some reason. Yeah, but, you uh, know, I... I managed multiple Twitter accounts, right? Yeah. Uh, so for for the purpose of keeping our sources out there, one of my Twitter accounts, maybe the Valve Index, is still following Anti. And he's changed his name and all that stuff, and he's changed his logo. But I'm but like, still um, streaming. the dude's still Here's... streaming? And he has, yeah. like, subs? Oh, Here's no, my he's, thing. he's gonna have subs. Like, he will still have a following after all I don't... this, because there are gonna be people who see him as a victim. Yeah. My thing is, I don't understand why people stop following people when they're doing bad shit. Like, shouldn't you be keeping an eye on those people? Like, I don't unfollow That's people. I, feel. I don't unfollow people just because I don't like them. I follow them because now when they do something, you can be like, hey, everybody. Or it's potentially guy... newsworthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Also, yeah, as a journalist, that's a whole other thing, though. But I, I, but think I, I do just look in my at it like, life and stuff like that. I'm it's like, He's such a cloud-driven person that it hurts him to lose followers. That's why I think for from a fan perspective, it's good to unfollow people like him who care about how many followers you have. Keep thinking of how long yeah. it's going to take that scene to rebuild. And it's, and it's even harder because we're living in COVID times right now. So, like, that scene is dead. I, w- I want to say it's dead at the moment. Well, at least it's dead right now. The like, smash but... The Smash Ultimate scene was on life support before this happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now no. it's just... It's like a whole bunch of people came into the hospital and just beat the crap out of him. While it was and, already in a hospital yeah, bed. Exactly, just yeah. in a hospital bed. And they're like, so, you think she is hurting now? Well... I was just going to say somebody pulled the plug, but you guys went with the whole pummeling uh, angle. No, it's, this is it's like still you're, 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 you're still in the hospital, but you've but had your legs beaten with a shovel for no good reason. And then in the hospital. Yeah. And then you found out that, uh, what, the top 
some of the top players, some of your top casters? Out of the top 50, I would say probably like a good maybe 60%. <sighs> Good God. Yeah. It's insane. yeah, that's a it's calling. So that's a massive calling, Ozzy. And like just from a from a esports perspective, like the scene's different now. It's very different. Like if there ever is and it's not just Smash, like there's been all sorts of allegations across the esports scene. Yeah. Uh where these events need to change. Security needs to change. Uh well, rules, I mean Evo's, rules about, Evo's not gonna be around for a while. At least Evo, not until next year. Evo's done. It will. I feel like it'll be back. I feel but like the it, cannons can bring it back. But they're gonna have to take a year to really do some work. Yeah. Because uh, of what Mr. Wizard did, or allegedly. But I, but I feel like that can be back. I hope, man. That was like my favorite esport event of the year. And it can be again. I yeah. I think I think the cannons will do enough of a good job that they can bring it back and they can make people forget all about Mr. Wizard. But I think the online aspect of it that was going to happen this year... That, that was doomed to fail anyway. Exactly. Like, if you're Capcom, you're happy that happened. Yeah. Like, that, that's, a, that's a happy little accident for them. Although they're was, still trying to run Capcom Cup, and I don't know how that's going to work. It was cool to see Capcom, NetherRealm, uh, Sonic Fox. Like a bunch oh, that of, was supposed to be the big comeback for KI. I feel... And I know. you know what? All credit to them because they were one of the first people to back out. Because that's when you stand by your principles. That yep. was going to be their big comeback story. Mm -hmm. And they so for, chose to stand by their principles. So you know what? Good for them. I like seeing that, uh, that stance that the publishers took and the developers took and even some esports players and, and casters was, took. Which is like, forced shut it their down. Hand. Yeah, they forced their shut hand. Shut it down, people. Yeah. Which is the, the right way to go about it. We're seeing that elsewhere. We're seeing it on my least favorite website on the planet, Facebook. Their advertisers are boycotting them. Because it's a garbage platform that foments racism, including uh, PlayStation, for uh, yep. which is relevant to us. Yep, PlayStation. I think uh, several game companies have started doing it, uh, but Sony was the biggest one. That, but that's pretty big. That was that was really huge, but uh, but yeah, F Facebook is a it's it's garbage. Mm -hmm. You know who else is garbage in social media? Twitter. Oh, the dumpster fire that's going on right now. That's going on as we're recording so this. Great. <laughs> that's so great. All those, all those rich people that got hacked and are, are giving away free Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, man, you know Bill Gates built his fortune on Bitcoin. I love it. Elon Musk giving out. He's like, I've given up $65,000. It's like, what? Oh, man. I love it. They keep attacking Elon Musk, too, specifically. Like, he gets his account back, and then they get it back. It's been pretty funny to watch. Yeah, you know, this Jeff is... Bezos has a full, like, Scrooge money, Scrooge money bin full of uh, Bitcoin. Well, God, Jeff Bezos, you know, he had he has his problems. You know, the whole, you know, he sent a pee, -pee pic. He did? Wow. You guys don't remember this? No. He got divorced over it. Oh. He yeah. got hacked. And someone leaked the pee-pee pic, and it was to his mistress, not his wife. Oops. And then, yeah, Mackenzie Bezos became the like, second richest it, person on Earth. I was going to say, did she get half? Because that's got, a lot. No, there was a prenuptial agreement. Uh, so he ended up keeping like the majority of the stock, but she became very wealthy. She's worth, like, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, because even a settlement like makes her you know wealthy beyond belief yeah she was one of the richest people on earth like immediately as an individual uh and he's still the richest person even after that so and we still got to give him our money we always do our money. through twitch Fox. and amazon prime and amazon web services ozzy which powers com. yeah we're 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 built on that thing we are just jeff bezos's we're at his mercy drones you can buy you can buy Jeff Bezos <laughs> yeah, on Amazon. Wow. <laughs> Just checking out your disembodied hand. Thank you for the water. Yeah, it was. It, Sorry. David Craddock got a disembodied hand on Amazon Prime. Yeah. <laughs> His Amazon Prime disembodied hand. Yeah. Uh super fast delivery, faster than Amazon Prime even. So faster than Death Stranding even. I ordered this water like a minute ago and boom. Awesome is badly trying to segue into Death Stranding just to trigger David. No. <laughs> It's working. Uh, it's for the people who listen to the podcast too. 
Yeah, uh, Bad Kitty legitimately has Shaq has bingo cards. So right now she's putting ships down. Yeah, right. Death, Stand- Death Stranding's on there. Breath of the Wild's on there. Cleveland Sports. Well, this was going to be the year that the Cleveland Browns won the Super Bowl, and there's not going to be a Super Bowl. Oh. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. That means everybody wins the Super Bowl. Yay. <laughs> everybody wins. I mean, <laughs> we all get let's rings. be honest. This was not the year the Cleveland Browns were going to win the Super Bowl. This is the year they were going to make the AFC Championship game and lose in some sort of embarrassing fashion. Also, the Rams were going to open up a uh, cronky land. That situation we have going on with the Cleveland Browns. They could have won the Super Bowl. They were going to win the Super Bowl. They were not going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> 2020 is one big Schrodinger's cat situation. It is. Yeah. It is. It totally is. And speaking to that extent, I, I talked about this on, I think, Wide World of Electronic Sports or something. Or The Dump. I can't remember. I can't keep track of these shows. These shows blend together after a while um, in COVID times. Yeah. They're all us on Zoom talking to each other. It's just you. I was talking about Schrodinger's like restaurant, right? So I had not been to China Star since the beginning of the pandemic, but last week I had a hankering for some Chinese food. Went in there. Uh, you you don't go in there. You call you call your order in, right? Yeah. Uh, they are super set up for social distancing. You come in there. Your order is on the table. And they're behind the counter. They have like a plexiglass window around the cashier. Yeah. And there's just like a little hole like at the bottom that you can put the pavement in. That's, that's like uh, that's good to hear because I, I was telling Amy just recently about your experience with kebab and curry. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't correct me if I'm wrong, no mask, no gloves. Even as they like the people, the cook stocking the buffet. No mask, no gloves. Well, there was no buffet. Oh, there was no buffet. Okay. But the like, buffet so, is done. They weren't wearing any safety. Uh, no one was wearing the, safety gear in the entire restaurant when I went in there. Yeah. So that, that, that shook me because that was my favorite restaurant. I was like, it was, old, it was like an anime betrayal. Yeah, top 10 on that. Yeah. But, I still uh, think you got to try to go to Talaki Pockies. I did. Oh, you did? Mm hmm. And they're wearing masks, but no, it, the problem is not everyone in there is. Oh, cust- the clientele? Yeah, customers. the customers. So yeah. like, uh, and it's a bar. You know, like when you walk yeah. into Tulake Paki, you walk in and it's like a bar right there. Will they bring your food to your car? I think, because they have numbered parking spots. I might ask them that. Yeah, yeah. that might be the safest bet for you. Yeah. Otherwise, I just burn my clothes when I get home. Yeah. That's been my. I'm Good running idea. out of clothing because every time I go outside, I just I set it on fire. Possible. You've got that like room full of Shaq t-shirts. You could burn all your shirts when you go just get another Shaq t-shirt. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with all that Mercury gear. Yeah, we got to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got to get ready to start printing uh, 25th anniversary shirts. Oh, good God. I was going to have a whole... You know what the 25th anniversary was going to be? It was a series of pizza parties around the world. Really? Yeah. And now I can't even do that. We can. It'll just be You can have pizza parties at the office. But just like two of us. Woo! No, we all come together for a year of the games in December. Because hopefully this will be over by December 2021. This will oh, be over oh, December 2021. Oh, oh 2021. That okay. might happen. Like that might happen. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so like December. You realize that the, the 25th anniversary is next year, right? Yes, Not yes, this yes. Year. yes. Well, but when you said coming together for Year of the Games, I thought you were talking about like five. Oh, no, we're doing virtual Year of the Games this year. Yeah. yeah. Virtual, it'll be Game of the Year at home. There are going to be so many <laughs> Zoom calls. It'll be the Year of the Zoom call. Man, that yes. was fun. I've been thinking about that lately, and I'm all, I'm kind of bummed that I won't get to see everybody this year in December. You know, it was but at the same time, I'm stoked that we can all do it on Zoom, that we can all get together virtually. I'm just glad we did it last year when we could. Yeah, before all shit went sideways. You know, like that we made it work. We figured out a way to do it, and it turned out. And great. it was great. It was yeah. fun. Like we're gonna do it again eventually. We'll do it again. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get there. We'll just. I'll just. Uh... And you all got to I'll meet Lola. I'll just start driving. 
Yeah, I'll start driving. I'll go pick up Ozzy in L.A. Oh, you could do a yeah, do a shack year the games road trip. Drive through, drive through Texas. I thought you were just gonna go down Route sixty six with Burkleton. Oh man, I don't. <laughs> I need some sort of buffer. <laughs> I'll pick, and you will be that buffer, Ozzy. Oh, wait! Awesome. So you're gonna pick up Ozzy first and then come no. back up to Greg? <laughs> Greg, no, no. I be- guess I'd, I, I guess I, Greg would go with me. Have Maybe Greg pick Uber up. to NorCal. <laughs> Meet you in yeah. yeah. We'll Greg put Greg meets on a plane. you in Oakland, and then you yeah. drive down to get Ozzy, and then you guys drive to get TJ, <laughs> and then and you drive Charlie north Josh. to Josh, and then you go east to get Krabs. Oh. What about uh, Michael? Brent. He didn't Where's come Brent? last week, but he might want to come. Well, you got to drive up through Kentucky to get Brittany. Yeah, so I know, well, I would say go up the coast to get the people in New Jersey, anyone in Jersey. So, like, Michael's in New Jersey. And Michael then can drive himself. Donovan can fly coach. Donovan. Yeah, yeah get Donovan on the way to New Jersey. <laughs> All and the East Coast people. Jersey to – Our staff is much bigger than I thought. <laughs> Kentucky. You're thinking of logistics. Kentucky. Get Brittany. I, Mike can drive Donovan and him. What about Rumpo? Yeah, nobody's no uh, no nobody's Bill, crossing the border to get Bill's Bill. not allowed to come, and Sam Bill, can't come. Bill has to sneak across the border. No, we have to. Yeah, we have Sam to smuggle and get Sam, then start the road trip. Yeah, start yeah. this over. Fly to Australia, <laughs> get okay. Sam. Fly back from Australia to America, then get Greg, then get Ozzy, then get TJ, then get Josh. This is the worst game at Death Stranding ever. (laughs) It's connecting the strands. And then you go to Kentucky, and then you come to Ohio. Okay, that's not complicated. No problem. You got this. It's not? (laughs) Easy. (laughs) Done. And then document it. You know what? Why don't we just rent like a tour bus? Mark Revier style? Something like that. Do you see? Have a tour bus, or does he just rent a car? We just have a. Oh, he had a tour bus, bus for the for the drive-in tour. Oh, really? Yeah, he did not stay in the hotel. Can we do the wow. pizza party on this on the on the school bus? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, you guys could stream the whole trip. And that's it. We do pizza Shaq parties News. at all those stops. Shack News IRL. Yeah. So you would have a pizza party in NorCal for all the NorCal shackers. All right, so we got a party in NorCal. That's Are we upgrading call. this to an RV? Drive it for Shack News. <laughs> Drive it for Shack News. <laughs> I'm into it. There's the title of the podcast, by the way. <laughs> Drive it. It just. I'll just spend the, next year gathering news, up employees. Tour. Next year, it'll just be me getting employees. Ozzy has joined your party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically Octopath Traveler, actually. It's not it's not Death Stranding. It's actually Octopath Traveler. Okay. So like none of us have played that game, so we didn't realize it. <laughs> oh my god, it's Bucky. I see Bucky. Not one, but two I, dogs on today's broadcast. I have I have my old futon like right here next to the desk because occasionally I need to put my feet up but uh, Bucky has sort of commandeered the futon <laughs> not the futon the ottoman uh-huh. two very different things yes. but yeah Bucky's commandeered the ottoman and he's made it a bed of sorts and he'll jump oh. on it whenever he wants attention everything can be a bed for Bucky you can be that's a bed. true he's small enough <laughs> you can be a bed the car seat can be a bed. I am a bed often <laughs> everything can be a bed for Bucky anything Bucky in the whole wide world it's funny because you could put Bucky on a bucket. He'd say, "Fuck it, I'm taking a nap, dude." It's funny though. Lola has many beds, but she, she will does. Still, she will still sleep just anywhere. Some of those beds are gonna me too, Lola. Though. <laughs> you, think, you think Lola's gonna have a twit longer from her bed? She yeah. just, doesn't get enough attention. She no just. Way. So we'll get too much attention. Mr. You Bill. You know what? I'll tell Mr. you this, David. It hasn't been that bad during the pandemic. She hasn't done that. <laughs> That's ironic. But okay. I know. It's weird. <laughs> Honestly, though, 
Because, like, you think about it, this is the longest I've ever been with her. Yeah, that's true. It's been, uh, when's the last time you traveled? Japan? No. God, I traveled three times this year. Oh, wait, yeah, CES. Uh, no, DICE. DICE. DICE was the last time I traveled. Yeah. February 14th was the last time I traveled. Yeah, I re- the last thing I traveled to was Mortal Kombat because we were supposed to do oh they were supposed God. to do the fu- that that whole thing where it was uh, supposed to be the big esports weekend, but they didn't cancel it until after I landed in Chicago. It was a close- I I was in the middle. I was inside the Uber when I found out. I'm like, oh, I'm here already. <laughs> oh, that was any worst. risk. I've already taken it. It sucked because we found out while you were in the air. And I was just like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Yeah. That's the worst. <laughs> oh, like, the news literally broke as I was driving the Uber because I was checking my phone. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the hell? I'm already on the way to the hotel. Yep. So it's a miracle that I that I didn't get sick from that whole weekend. <sighs> it oh, is. Seriously. And in, like, that, that was a whole cluster. I mean, at least we got cool stuff for Spawn. But that was not – I wouldn't not say that was worth, worth the trip. it at all. It really wasn't. No. No. Ozzy, you're more important than Spawn. <laughs> but, Spawn, yeah. like, how many times can they put Spawn in a Mortal Kombat before I just don't give a shit anymore? That's his first time in a Mortal Kombat. You're thinking what? of Soul Calibur. Yeah, he was in Soul Calibur. Oh, sorry. Spawn in fighting game. Yawn. Todd, Mc- Todd McFarlane was all excited about Spawn being in Mortal Kombat because they both okay, came out sorry. the same year. It, you're right. It was Soul Calibur. They, they were both created in the same year, which is a fun fact. I guess. Spawn okay. is a better fit for Mortal Kombat, I would say. But they always better. put, like, they just keep shoving comic book characters in as DLC instead of, like, giving us, like, real DLC characters. Like, Robo- like Robocop? Robocop's a cool character to put in. <laughs> yeah, I, but, like, Robocop. Uh, I don't like the licensed characters in Mortal Kombat either. To be honest. Yeah. Well, well like- then you're in luck, David, because if... if if Warner Brothers sells her gaming division, you won't have to worry about that anymore. True. I mean, like, I think it's cool, right? Like, I think they've done a good job with the characters, but I would rather see more classic Mortal Kombat characters or new characters than, yeah. you know, Freddy Krueger, who I played in 9. He was fun, but I knew he was never going to come back, you know? Yeah, that, that is a sad thing. We're not gonna get... And Spawn fits in that world so much better. He does. He really I will does. say I would this. have liked them to try and fit the licensed characters into that DLC story at some point. But it, yeah. it is fun to watch Sonic Fox learn these new characters and learn how to whoop everyone's ass with them, even if they're broken. They're not he does good. it so efficiently, too. <laughs> it's like his or their streams, uh, when a new uh, DLC comes out, really entertaining to watch to watch them work love, love seeing sonic fox at the uh, devolver uh, direct that also that whole thing hilarious. which we the haven't whole... talked about the devolver direct enough that was that was so much fun holy shit that that's was how a... you put on that's how you put on a direct not not naming any names nintendo treehouse that fucking mm. nintendo treehouse not uh not to throw shade at tree ha- Treehouse, but look, we love Treehouse. Google but Stadia. the one on Friday was no good. Oh my god! Okay, but you were better Google than Stadia. Stadia. <laughs> better than Stadia better than is Stadia. like better than Ezra, but worse. What? What's wor- Whoa! Hey, are you just dissing better than Ezra? No, I'm saying that better than Ezra is better than better than Stadia. Well, it's good living with. It's not you hard off. to be better than Stadia. I have nothing. Re- I'm not saying anything well, bad about good. better than Ezra. Oh, wow, that... wow, wow, wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nintendo, I feel like everyone is waiting for Nintendo to like unleash the hounds with those Mario remasters. Like, uh, I don't care yeah. about Super Mario, Mario RPG, or whatever. I don't care about that other game they showed. I don't remember what it's called. I just want those Mario remasters. But like, what COVID the hit them so hard that they don't even want to do a, a direct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Like the... It's because their their production team doesn't work remotely. It's all built yeah. on that one stage, you know, yeah. and that that facility and working together. And they just they don't feel they can do it safely right now. Yeah, so everything's going a la carte, like what we saw with uh, Smash. But, but what's weird is that I thought Sakurai did a great job with his presentation. 
Like it felt like I was watching Sakurai a YouTuber or something. It was really cool to see his place. Like it's like it was like a Nintendo Cribs. And like his two TVs next to each other. You saw that, David, yeah. right? Yep. You have that exact same setup. I do. <laughs> like, so it's like I, I saw that and I was like, oh man, I could see him hosting like awesome gaming sessions. Yeah, I'm I'm sad we haven't gotten enough of that kind of stuff from Nintendo. And like like has anybody even seen Doug Bowser since this whole thing started? Oh, no, he's hiding in this castle. <laughs> I I feel your Doug Bowser is in the castle. Um, <laughs> I feel like they kind of need to rethink the direct format because Iwata kind of made those, and they haven't really felt the same since he left. Like they haven't really been as creative or as directed. Like with him, there was always a direct a direction to them, but now it's just kind of been like here are some video game trailers and announcements. They're, they I, have felt very samey over yeah. like the last year or so. Like no think, Muppet, you know? I think there's just a pressure to keep them coming consistently so that Nintendo is present in people's minds. And also, I can imagine that the current state of the world has made it difficult to keep up the same production level. Like, I, I, like look at Cheeky. Conan O'Brien is basically on a webcam He's not people. anymore. He's in a theater now. Yeah, but it still looks like he's on a webcam when he's like talking to his guests and stuff. I get like that. Like that, mm-hmm. that aside, the, uh, setting the pandemic aside, when I, I think of the Nintendo Direct, I think of a very certain style of presentation mm-hmm. that really hasn't been met since Sawada passed away five years ago. Like also, just kind of like a a swag, like a like a like yeah. they had a style to them. Yeah, but they like, don't right now. They're very formulaic. And they're very just PR driven. Uh, directs but. directs used to be like, like when they would announce an upcoming direct, it was almost like being excited about a trailer for a new movie. They're like, "Hey, directs coming in a week, and it's going to be this, and it's going to be awesome." Now it's like twelve hours beforehand, like, "Hey, we're doing a direct," and it's just like twelve minutes of announcements mm-hmm. with nobody on screen. And again, pandemic, but like, and it, and it doesn't help that everybody else has lifted that format, like. Yeah, Xbox and PlayStation are doing the exact same thing now. And that's what Devolver was about. Their Direct was about how there's too many Directs. And then they, the thing, their right? solution was to make a demo called Devolver Land. Which is like... I the, still need to play that because I need to see if that's like a one-to-one recreation of the LA Convention it's Center. It's pretty it looks like close. It. Like the LA Convention, like they, got, they got West Hall. I saw West Hall in there. And yeah, I was... I was I was seeing like that first look, and I'm like, "That's the LA Convention Center. Like, that's okay." Hilarious. If you know the history between Devolver Digital and ESA, them moving into the Convention Center and calling it Devolver Land during the COVID nineteen pandemic is like the Karate Kid sweep the leg moment. I've I've started like keeping a little list of like things are going to come back to when we circle back around for Euro games, but Devolver Land is probably going to be like best surprise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's hilarious. Biggest middle finger to ESA. Yeah. <laughs> right there. I don't know. They had given several middle fingers during the year. Cause they didn't, they cancel E3 before E3 canceled E3. Oh yeah. Well, they always basically do everything like a day or two beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. No trendsetters. Exactly. They're always oh. doing everything before it's cool. You want to go down? Okay. You can go down. I'm into it. Lola wants down. She wanted. She, she had been on the. She had been here for a while. Yeah. Wow. Well, should we? It had been a while. I don't know. What else? What else were we supposed to talk about? Oh yeah, you, you reviewed know. a game. Right? Yeah. Should we? Do we need to take commercial breaks? Oh uh, yeah. We're sticking commercial breaks exist. before I talk about Ghost of Tsushima. Let's hear about where. What are we part of? The Greenlit Podcast Network. Let's hear we're about some. We're part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Why not hear about some other fantastic shows that are we're affiliated with? Okay. Here we go. There you go. Hey, Benito. I've been reading the Bible lately, and nobody ever told me how many talking dogs and wizard battles were in this thing. Well, Chris, you know what I always say. If you can understand Star Wars, you can understand the Bible. Apocrypals, part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. This 
is Super Nintendo. You know I don't like Dr. Mario. I think he's a fraud back alley doctor. Um, am I very happy to be here? With the help of a doula, you can do anything in the tub. You're looking at the Nintendo knitting machine. Do you feel that I abused you by making you play Night Trap? <laughs> I challenge you guys to a dance off at McDonald's tomorrow. What have I done, Sweet Jesus? What have I done? <laughs> Super Nintendo Ads Entertainment Podcast. Every week right here on Greenland. And we're back. Wow. What a great ad that was. Podcasts. Do you listen to them? Well, you should. Why not listen to this podcast and our podcast and all the podcasts on the Greenlit Podcast Network that's full of podcasts. Just chock full of vitamins and minerals to keep you healthy and strong. Blake, tell me about this. It's so great, you guys. Oh, my gosh. I want to go there. It's a beautiful, beautiful game full of just lovely scenery, uh, head-to-toe, breathtaking views, awesome cinematic moments. Uh, Sucker Punch really knocked it out of the park with this one. Uh, You know, uh, it's... Just I love I love samurai. Stuff. I have a robot samurai outfit. I fucking love samurai stuff. I wouldn't call myself a Japanophile, but like you know, I've I've seen some documentaries. I've read a couple books. I've checked out the book. I've read the book of the Five Rings. You know, uh, I know a little samurai stuff, uh, and I love Kira. Who doesn't love uh, Kira Kurosawa films? So I think that. That right there alone helps knock it out of the park. I mean, just the fact that, like, this is as close to, like, being a samurai and a Kurosawa film. Like, I always thought Yojimbo would make an awesome video game. Like, have you seen that movie? Uh, They've tried doing, like, stuff based off the Seven Samurai. It's never really worked out. But, like, even in the past, samurai games totally enthrall me, like Bushido Blade and Onimusha, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I really enjoy games where you, where you get to be a samurai, and this was just so good. Great story, beautiful graphics, a lot of stuff to do. There's, like, so much stuff to do, and I said it in my review, it's kind of like Breath of the Wild in that, like, you're, you're, you've got a quest you're doing, but then all of a sudden you see some stuff out of the corner of your eye, so you start, like, picking flowers and uh, other resources and then like oh there's a fox then you follow that fox and it takes you to a shrine now you got a point and then what's over here oh it's a little place to meditate and write a haiku you write a haiku you get like a cool new headband uh, and then there's another shrine that you want to go and climb up so you can get the charm so you, that you can uh, use it to augment your sword you know just stuff like that just it really I was I was playing through how I normally play a game and I realized that I had to like start, you know, hustling if I was going to get through the story by the time I had to get the review done. Uh, But even then, you know, I was still like uh, several hours worth of distractions kept me on different paths as I was going along. And I wanted to make sure that I did a lot of the, uh, there's like, you have characters that kind of joined your cause along the way. And a lot of them have side quests for you to do. So I was making sure that I did all of those as well to really get the full story and have those connections with those characters. Uh, yeah, a lot of emotional moments, surprisingly, too. Like, this game had a few moments that really just kind of uh, sucker punched me, I guess. Uh-huh. You could say, hey, yeah, I wasn't ready for him. And lock me, they knocked me for a loop uh, with the feels, which is tough. Like, I don't get the feels from games, no matter, like, how good or bad they are, you know? It Even was, Death Stranding? Like, uh, I haven't played enough Death Stranding to see if it gives me the feels. <laughs> or not. You know? I know, I I do love that fetus, though, so... If, you know, maybe it'll hit li- those maternal instincts. Ghost of Tsushima, a 9 out of 10. Uh, I did. What, what uh, kept it from going over the edge to that 10 score for you? Uh, so the combat, you know, you have, like, a choice between stealth and, like, straight up, like, 
calling people out because you're a samurai. You're not really supposed to stab people from behind. That's like a big part of the story is like not you know, assassins of Tsushima. Yeah, but you you get for most missions. Some missions you got to do stealth. Other missions you have to do combat. For more, for the most part, though, you get an option of how you want to approach things. Uh, I really enjoyed being a samurai more than an assassin. Uh, but the thing about it is the camera is way too close and you're constantly rotating it to make sure you don't get like stabbed in the back or anything like that. And there's no real lock on system. It's all based on like how you're kind of like who is where and you kind of push towards them but that would backfire a lot. And I would go from finding one enemy to another enemy that was now closer and it would get a little frustrating and chaotic, especially when that meant like I kept getting stabbed by somebody instead of killing somebody. Um, so that that was pretty much what kept it from being a nine. A ten. Uh, overall. Or yeah, a ten rather. I'm sorry. Um, but honestly, if the combat had been cleaner, like I would have, con- I almost would have considered a ten, you know? Wasn't the camera uh, also kind of nah? That's what I was saying. Like the camera is like is it is it the gameplay? It's not the gameplay. It's the camera more in the combat scenario that's giving you the problem. Yeah, and the fact that there's no real target lock. You know, like if it, if this game had like Zelda style Z targeting, it would be better. Or something. Yeah, that would help. Also, well, you know, bat the combat reminded me of the Batman Arkham series a lot. Um, and that, you know, you have different moves uh, that work better on enemies than others. Only in this case, it was sword stances. Mm-hmm. So you, as you progressed, you would unlock new stances for your sword, and they would give you uh, advantage over, like, swordsmen, shield, like, sword guys with shields, spearmen, and, like, giant brute enemies, which is basically the four main classes. There's also archers. And there's dogs that'll attack you and stuff like that. They're not the only enemies, but for the most part, they're the ones that you're going to face in combat. And they'll be at different skill levels depending on where you are on the island and like what level you're at. You know? I saw this in your written review and then also in the video review that went up today. Um, this like this duel gameplay, like oh it's, the samurai duels. Yeah, can you talk oh. a little bit about those? Like they seem. When I saw that, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> oh, dude, it's like it's like a money shot. I don't know what to tell you. It's so it's so cool. There's just like there's this cool like sequence beforehand where you, you're 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 facing each other and the music is just like perfect and it cuts and you see the enemy in the distance getting ready and then it slowly bur- blurs to bring your character more in. I don't know. It's just, it's so tasty. And then it's just, there, a lot of the duels are tough. And I got my ass kicked a lot over and over. But it's like, they're so freaking cool. It's like what being a samurai is all about. You're in this little duel circle. And there's different ones. There's one, like, the the environments for these duels are all just, oh, my God. They're beautiful. Yeah, it looks like you know? some of the most cinematic moments in the game probably start at those places but then a lot of the time after it's like are these duels kind of like the gore nest in doom where like once you kill that guy it's just like a bunch of shit happens after that uh, or, is it, or are they different uh, are they like different things okay duels happens for different reasons duels can be part of a quest a lot of times uh there are like uh mythical quests in the game a lot of those end in duels and those will get you like new weapons or new armor usually. Uh, that's not how they all end, but uh, a, mo- a lot of them did. Uh- so, what were you saying before Zoom screwed us over? Oh, I was saying that the duels are epic. Right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, I'm sold. Like- and we, you basically sold me. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm buying this game. Yeah, oh, you'll love it, Asif. I mean, you know, I don't make the Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild comparison lightly, but mm-hmm. I think that you understand what I'm talking about when I talk about there's just so many awesome distractions that, like, getting to the main plot. I mean, we see that in a lot time. of open world games, you know, like, or it's, uh, or, or good ones. I would say, uh, 
Red Dead. Like, like for instance, like th- that was a game that I could not do the story at all. I would get distracted and just go hunting or I would run yeah. someone and they would say something to me and I would just be like, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> you know, like I don't know. I, I got into so much shit in Red Dead 2 that I was never able to progress in the story. Uh, so I feel like I, yeah. I'm happy that I don't have to review this game because I get to play this like I would an infamous game where you know you can hang around in an environment that's what i like about sucker punch games like you could try to speed run them and go right through them if you want to but there's like a lot that they do to build their worlds out this one it seems like their most detailed world they've ever built oh man it's yeah i mean i could have spent more time in the first area and i would have if i didn't look at like how much time i had left to review the game and be like well, if I'm spending this much time in the first world, or the first area, rather, like, how much time am I going to spend in the next couple of areas? And I was, I had to kind of, like, pick up my pace a little bit to make sure I could plow through. But the thing is, is, like, I still am going to finish doing all that stuff. It's And it's rare that I go back to a game and I'm like, I'm going to finish doing all this stuff because I want to do it. You know, sometimes you review a game and you're just like, I've had enough of this. I just had to, like, you know, power through it. Um, yeah, it's not frequent. Yeah, it's not. It's not often oh, yeah. that you review a game and then you're like, yeah, you like it so much that you're like, I have to hundred percent this. Yeah, I just spent like half a month playing this game, mm-hmm. and I still want to play this game. That's and that's like a big uh, mark for me. Also, uh, what was great, you don't have to get off your freaking horse to pick stuff up. You can talk to people on your horse. You can pick up resources on your horse you oh, can even God. like fight things right best feature and I, I well not the best feature in any game ever but it's such a like it even took zelda a while to get that feature going yeah so i really when it when stuff that's in a game i really appreciate it i don't know uh i think it's worth noting i love uh, that the world is so big that you can get lost in it but like the wind can direct you in the right direction if you ever feel like it's too overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I think a, a world map would have been good. Uh, but I can't really fault them for trying to... It didn't... It never really got in the way, but I did have to swipe up. I was like playing Tinder, only I'm swiping up instead of right. But does giving lot, it a map you know? kind of make it feel a little limited? Like it, make, it makes you feel like there's only so much space you can explore? I mean, it depends on who you are. For some people, that might be the case. I think for me, it's just I will. I'm the kind of person that's going to keep going back and forth, looking at their map to make sure I'm in the right direction. And the wind thing is cool, but I found myself like constantly swiping to make it happen. And like it wouldn't, it would be more subtle if I left it alone. But you know, I just wanted to constantly be sure I was on the right track. So maybe a mini map option stops me from swiping up a bunch and I can just sort of keep going and not have to be thinking about the direction as much because I can just look at the mini map and be like, okay, I'm going where I want to go. Hmm. That's kind of it. I don't know. I'm not going to diss the game. It was immersive as hell. I'm not going to diss, diss it for not having a mini map, but it might have been a good idea. But you sold that's me on it, I'm that's saying. for sure, because... Yeah. I was going to go with Paper Mario instead this weekend, but I kind of want to play this now. It's yeah. so pretty and it's samurais and like play it. I recommend playing it with Japanese dialogue with subtitles to really give it like the effect that you're watching. Like, Can you play Japanese the whole movie? game with one, with the camera filters? Can you make it yeah. like do the whole thing in black and white? You are going to have a really rough time if you play the whole thing in Kurosawa mode. Uh, I like Kurosawa mode. I'm glad that they included it. Like that stuff was, is like you're gonna do a duel. That stuff's awesome. But uh, a lot of the attacks have like color markings. So like if someone's gonna do a strong attack, there'll be a red dot. If they're gonna do an unblockable attack, a blue dot. Uh, also there's and they're all just dots where, if you do black and white. Yeah, there's also missions where you have to follow certain. You have to look for certain fields of colored flowers, like. 
You need to be like, oh, I need to follow yeah. all the purple flowers. So black place, and white doesn't really help you in that scenario. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. It's I feel like it's there just for the people that love doing like photos and like yes. cool video capture. It's like perfect so for photo mode. And this game has yeah. a photo mode, right? Yeah, it does. It has a pretty extensive photo mode. Yeah. Um, so I So it's think, like Animal Crossing, David. Like, you know, there's those different filters when you take pictures. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean I played through uh some stuff in Kurosawa mode and it did feel more like a Kurosawa film, I can tell you that. And it's also a really well done black and white mode. Like the thing about Kurosawa flicks is if you look at them, there there's the stark contrast between the grayscale is so impressive and the way that things look clean. I don't know how else to put it. Like Kurosawa films just have a really clean look to them and it really comes across in the way that they textured all the black and white. You know, it's uh, it's cool that the features in the game, but I can tell you just from looking at gameplay for I don't know, over a year now, right? Like they've been showing this game off. I always think of how vibrant it is. Like it is gorgeous. Like the flower petals, like everything about it, it just seems so colorful. Mm-hmm. That like I'm not that interested in playing that mode, but yeah, I, I'll probably pause it turn on that mode take pictures in that mode but i i'm probably going to play the game almost entirely with in in the regular mode i whatever you call it yeah it's it's it kurosawa mode definitely feels more like it's for dicking around Uh and like i you i i played through the whole game without it and then i was like okay let's let's check it out let's put on the english dialogue and put on the kurosawa mode to check it out just to make sure that like the voice acting solid and the mode is actually playable. It's also like objects, fortunately, like objects that you have to pick up shine, like they'll have, they'll, they'll kind of flash. So you'll see them. So they don't get lost in the background as much when you're playing in Kurosawa mode. They're still a little harder to make out because you can't see like their like bright, vibrant colors. But they did think about that. Uh, in terms of the rest of the game, like making sure you can see everything. That's the only, by the way, like, yeah, you're going to be picking up resources a lot in this game. Uh, I didn't really mind so much. I love exploring anyway for everything I can find. So, yeah, I was cool with it. And, uh, you know, finding all that stuff helps you upgrade your armor, your weapons. Different types of armor will do different things. Like, you have uh, traveling gear and if you wear the traveling gear it increases your the radius of the map that appears from the fog of war as you travel uh you have gear that you know ups your damage and your armor gives you buffs to uh there's things called face-offs other than just regular samurai duels you'll get a chance to do face-offs sometime where it's like you and an opponent you hold down triangle and you wait for them to come at you and when they come at you you just like Fucha, and then as you upgrade it, you'll be able to fucha like more enemies. So, with 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 some armor I got, as well as increasing the stats on the face off, I was able to kill five enemies in a face off before I had to actually start fighting. So it's like you kill one enemy, and then you wait for another enemy to come charging at you with a sword raised up and you get them and you just wait for them to start attacking you to take the kills and then i also set it up so that kills increased my health and my resolve resolve is like probably the biggest deal like managing your resolve during combat because it's like these circles right and you can get extra circles in different ways either by completing certain missions or if you find there's these bamboo strike mini games all over the island that are kind of like a rhythm game you have to press uh button combos in an order in a certain amount of time uh kind of and the to uh, fill your resolve but your resolve if you're dying you can uh use one resolve to bring back a certain amount of health uh you can use them to do special attacks that you learn throughout the game so, like, I learned, like, a special attack that I could charge up, and it would pretty much insta-kill at least two enemies for me. That's Another cool. one that, like, slice, could slice through groups of enemies. 
you know. Um, so you can use your resolve different ways. And uh, if you're in a big battle, yeah, it's going to make a big difference. So. so one complaint I read from some reviewers, not, uh, I don't know, was that the Japanese voiceover was not synced well. But that's oh, like true. Have you ever watched a foreign yeah. film before? I don't yeah. know. Those people are dipshits. Those people <laughs> I was going to say, like, that sounds like any yeah. of those movies I've ever seen. I, yeah. I just wanted your take on it because I, I felt the same way. I'm like, I've watched a lot of Japanese dub uh-huh. movies and even games. Like Breath of the Wild, for uh-huh. instance, David. Like, it's a game that I'd say is better with the Japanese uh, voice actors. Yeah, like, go watch an early Jackie Chan movie it's just, yeah. or a yeah. Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think that that's, that was a weird criticism that I saw that people were dinging the game for that. And then the gameplay that I saw, I, I didn't feel like that was a criticism really. The uh, one oh. criticism I've heard, Blake, that I want to get your take on is uh, I've heard that um, the stealth AI kind of breaks once you're spotted. Like, you just run away and the enemies don't really know what to do. I saw uh, GameSpot had a video review, which I watched, and they showed that several times. Did you run into that much? You said you didn't really favor stealth as you played, though, so maybe you didn't. Think I mean, I would kill a guy and then some people would run over and eventually they would go back to doing what they're doing. Mm. But they would just kind of, they would be like in attack mode for a minute. Mm. I don't know. It's uh. I mean, I guess I could see that a little bit. I, I don't know. I didn't really think of it as being broken, though. I never ran into an issue where they wouldn't go back to what they were doing after some time. But it's like, you kill a dude, it alerts them. They find the body, and they're kind of like, look around for a little bit. But eventually, you know, it goes fine. But at the same time, if I could get away with, like, killing, like, a couple dudes in stealth, and then there's, like, two or three guys left, like, I'd probably just jump down and start killing them all. Plus, you have so much art, you have so much stuff at your disposal, you know? Like, I don't want to give, like, you get tools to kill people from a distance. You have a bow and arrow. You get, like, another bow. You get, like, a long bow as well, and a few other things to, like, kill people from far away. Like, I use the bow and arrow a lot. Uh honestly especially for stealth stuff because you'd have like guards in a lookout tower you just headshot them you know sneak into the camp start sneaking around you see a guy by himself headshot him you know um there's all sorts of cool way to cool ways to assassinate people in this game though and like you're able to assassinate more than one person as you upgrade stuff as well so um yeah i don't know i i it, it, I, I guess the thing of it is, is the game is the game doesn't hold your hand, but it and it, it doesn't really punish you for dying, and it never feels so difficult that you hate it. I it, I guess it's really well balanced in that sense. So even though I had these frustrating issues with the combat and the camera, maybe I'd die once or twice on a mission, but I'd still be like, ah, eh, whatever. Like, it's not, it, it didn't mess me up in the long run. I That's can cool. keep going. That's cool. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, I just felt like everything that was rough about the game was forgivable, but the big thing was the combat. I don't know. A lot of the stuff I chalked up to it being just a giant open world game uh, with a few pop-ups and, like, random glitches here and there. But, you know, for the most part, they did a good thing. Like, there was never a point where my character got stuck on anything. Like, it would just reset. If I was, like, jumping somewhere, I wasn't supposed to jump and, like, got kind of frozen. It would the, reset uh, really quickly. The camera issue you had sound like a bigger problem than um, the lack of a lock-on system. Because when I think of yeah. – made the comparison to Batman Arkham. When I think of those games, having a lock-on would have um, kind of made the combat stutter. Like – in those games, instead of locking on, you just tilt your stick in the direction of the enemy. You want Batman to punch and then press mm-hmm. the press counter or punch or whatever. Um, does I mean Ghost of Tsushima operate the same way, or because it doesn't sound yeah, like it, it does from, from lock on. But I'll defer to you since you played it. It does try and use that lock on, but it's not as clean 
as the Arkham one. Okay. So like, yeah, I'll try and like it'll it'll get confused easily. Oh, okay. So like, yeah, I can definitely think of several times where I'm like attacking a sword guy, and the spear guy spear guy comes toward me, and all of a sudden, like my direction turns and my attack combo, like in the middle of my attack combo, yeah. suddenly I'm attacking a different person. That, and that's that would be frustrating. Batman, that never happens in Batman. So okay, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think like just some a stronger lock on system is really what it needed, along with a camera that was further out so you could see everything around you. Yeah, because it was frequently you're getting flanked or people coming from behind you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that ain't cool, man. That ain't no. cool at all. No. It's, so you end it, up rolling around a lot more than you need to to try <laughs> to like keep everybody in front of you. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Oh, well, I'd like to buy this game. I have bought uh, them. Yeah, I really I, wish I bought the collector's edition because it came with the samurai mask. Oh, but, shit. you have one like, of them. I have my own, but it's like the face mask. I don't really have the face mask. You, you can never have too many face masks around the right about now. Yeah, but, I mean, this one has a big hole in the center, but <laughs> no, sure. I don't want that. So I would I put have, it over my regular face mask. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have a. Uh, I, I, I noticed that some sites are um, praising. Well, some sites have reported on Japanese developers and just other citizens um, praising the work that Sucker Punch did uh, in paying attention to Japanese culture. And I actually have a couple of friends at Sucker Punch. I contacted one. He said not to mention his name because Sony's pretty strict as to who they can talk to. But he said, um, as one of the designers, he said, yeah, there's so many little um, details we paid attention to. For example, I don't know if you noticed this, Blake, but depending on who you're talking to or what you're facing, you'll bow slightly differently. And all of that stuff is supposed to be accurate. I thought that was a like a really cool touch. Yeah. You actually, you bowing is like one of the things you can just do in the game yeah, you can cool. bow you can play flute uh it doesn't really have anything to do with anything but it's there yeah it's you just know, it's just it. part of that like the thing is you know cultural appropriation is such a, a big deal across all mediums right now I, I i deal with a lot of it in in fiction writing novels but um it's kind of cool that this western you know american-run company uh really did their homework um and kind of got you know nailed all these details. It's really cool. Especially, oh, yeah. The, yeah. It's it's funny that we talk about this just days after we see the reveal for Far Cry Six. Well, and it's like the you know, spring is Latino? <laughs> Question mark? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ozzy, you talked to the um, developers of um, Life is Strange Two about that. Yes, and that's why I consulted you when I was working on our long read earlier this year. Like, hey, what were your issues with this? Do you feel they were resolved? I talked to them, and they had a pretty good. Uh, I thought they had a good answer that they, you know they feel like they can write the story if they do their homework. But it's also something where you know as we become increasingly aware of of cultures that maybe aren't given their due in video games, novels, movies, whatever. I think it's important to call out studios who are really trying to be respectful and, and accurate when it comes to those portrayals. So I just thought that was like, that's something I'm really looking forward to exploring in, in Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, that's definitely a bonus point for me. Yeah, and since I can't go to Japan on a plane, I'm yeah. and I'm not allowed to go because my stupid country is filthy. Uh, this is the closest I can get to going to Japan. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get this game. I think this is gonna be a launch purchase for me. I think so for me too. I'll go more into detail on this later this year. But like, I fell off of Last of Us Two really hard, and that was oh. disappointing because I think the first game was one of the best I've ever played. But I found two pretty disappointing, not because of the representation or any of that those controversies. Like I'm I'm all for the representation they do, but like I thought it was missing the heart of last of us one okay so i'm so, hoping ghost of tsushima will be like the playstation exclusive which i've been looking forward to this game for like two years so i feel like from what i've heard it's really going to live up to my expectations. without really spoiling last of us 2 i haven't even played it um but i've <laughs> read a lot of 
articles about it, like I've been spoiled. I, I know everything that happens in the game. Yeah, yeah. Is it that portion of the game where you're playing as another character? No, I thought I think that's that part's good. Fucking brilliant. But okay, uh, so it's not that. It's, no, it's not that. That's the thing that the internet the is complaining about. Not the inciting event. A lot of people are uh, upset about the inciting event because yeah, sure. Is the move. Um, I think like a lot of my problems can be stemmed up by saying or summed up by saying triple A games are too fucking long. Um, it's just that gameplay formula kind of worth in for yeah, you after a while. Like I, you know, you know, you know me, Asif. I'm I'm very much a gameplay systems over traditional narrative guy. Uh-huh. But in this in this particular franchise, I I think that in the first game especially, just when you would get to a point where you were kind of getting burned out on the violence, they would stop and there'd be story beats to kind of reinvest you. Last of Us Two, I go through like stealth murder after stealth murder that i'm like again with this and i just kind of get tired of playing and put it down like i honestly for a week i forgot i had the game and i just haven't picked it up since it's just it's just like these types of stories are compromised by the fact that uh of of triple a bloat like oh we need to get at least 20 hours out of this because we've spent this many hundreds millions have have you beaten the game Uh, i have not played uh, last of us yet okay it's three or seven i'm not gonna play it I love Last of Us One. I've replayed it several times, and I, I I talk to Josh like I'm not even halfway through, and I just put it down. I'm like I'm just I might watch a let's play of this thing. Honestly, I I never finished Last of Us One, and I my interest for Last of Us Two is just dwindling by the day. The more I the more I hear of it, it's it's well written. I think a lot of the complaints are just inflammatory uh-huh. and uh, provocative. But I, I feel like Naughty Dog fumbled the execution. I have other problems with it, but the main highlight for me is it's just too damn long for a narrative game, right? Like, like Ghost of Tsushima sounds like the sort of game that is as long as you want it to be. You know? Yeah, you can go uh, yeah, basically. Main quest line, or like, hey, there's a squirrel or flowers or whatever. You can do that. Yeah, Whereas like honest. Two, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, Last of Us Two. You're like, I like the gameplay. I, I've always liked the stealth, mix of stealth and horror. That's like a game tailor made for David. Uh-huh. There's all, like too much of it. I just kind of get bored and desensitized after a while. And this is the sort of story where you shouldn't be getting desensitized to this violence because a lot of the themes are about the cycle of violence. And if you don't care, then there's a problem. You know? Yeah. Oh. That's, that's space. That's basically what's turning me off to it as well. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's what I've heard, and that's why I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna keep planting flowers and Animal Crossing instead. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) it's like a nicer. We're all pick flowers and go to Tsushima. Yeah, that too. No, I'm super excited. Like, I like Sucker Punch games. I I I really like Uh the the Infamous series quite a bit. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, I really. I'm actually really. really, I'm actually really sad that I never picked up the last Infamous game. I, I never second song, song, right? Second yeah, second song was great, and, two, and I really liked them. But because you could go around doing Banksy art, yeah, there were just quests to go make art. Did you see I this new the Banksy series? Yeah. What? Banksy tagged the tube in London. Yeah, and it got taken down, right? Yeah, he got taken down already, but it was pretty great. It was a bunch of rats, and they were like not wearing masks properly and like vomiting. So that it was like. It was pretty neat. I uh, I recommend checking it out. But sorry, and yeah, a squirrel tested positive for bubonic plague in Colorado yesterday. And that was that one was... extinction level event at a time, please. No, no, no. People are blowing that information. That's happened in America before. That happened like in the last two decades. The thing of it is, is bubonic plague is completely controllable. Uh, yeah. I think the issue that a lot of people have is this is like a confluence of disease you know like we're having trouble containing one outbreak so they're just afraid they're just afraid because it's bubonic plague i get that but i'm just saying like that's something that is easily contained it's less and we have the more that we've completely fucking botched this disease you know yeah yeah i don't trust i don't trust us to contain any disease here's the the cold here's the thing a lot of people have missed like major and minor surgeries because hospitals are overrun. Yep. So imagine you get bubonic blade, which in normal conditions is easily contained, but now your hospital's overrun and doctors and nurses are overworked. It could snowball. I think that's the point. Yeah, they've called the National Guard into Houston. Yeah. 
because uh, not because the hospitals are overrun, mm-hmm. but because there's not enough pulmonary specialists, there's not enough nurses. Yeah. Like, and in my brother's hospital, a bunch of nurses quit yeah, because they're not getting hazard pay. They're being forced to reuse N95 masks and like... That's fucking ridiculous. And people are accusing them of lying, of making yeah. this up. Yeah. yeah. Like, why are you going to work under those conditions? It's ridiculous. Uh, and then I read today that the state of Texas... Um, they're probably going to mandate the schools reopen, or you know, they're going to try to reopen schools. And if a teacher refuses to go into work, uh, they can be fired and uh, lose their pension. Like, this is what's outrageous to me. We're asking teachers to teach, to coach, to stay after, to talk with parents and students. To, to carry firearms and be security guards, to be <laughs> nurses and doctors. You can't control, imagine like a kindergarten or preschool teacher, like kids, keep your mask on. No, little Joey, don't like rub your mask on Susie's face. They're asking- And don't to, make me bust a cap. Yeah, like- <laughs> Don't make me bust a cap in all your asses. Blah, blah, blah kids. Already, like criminally underpaid and yeah. under- Yeah. And yes. is, all right, another, all right, kids, put your masks on and let's do a gun shooting drill. Yeah, like everyone like, under your desk. And, yeah, and we're asking so much more of them, and they're not getting any more pay. It's for the yeah, same exactly. Rate. Well, no hazard saying. pay. It's that's ridiculous. What I'm saying. They're like, you're not like that's. What I, I, you know, I know Ozzy. Your wife is a teacher, correct? Is am I wrong? Am I making? No, you're right. She's actually going to start this fall, and uh, LAUSD came out yesterday, and they said uh, it will be online. Yeah, like like she's expected to be all these professions, which really should be like. X amount of full time salaries, but she's getting one, right? And that's, right. that's that's crazy to me. You know, people are still human beings. Like that's forget about the parents and kids for a minute. Teachers have to be terrified and infuriated right now and confused. Like nobody knows what's going on. I think she feels a little better about things right now just because she's it's going online. to be asked to teach online. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If that's- it's Orange County and they're being asked to go in without uh, without masks and without social distancing, then it's time to panic a little bit. That's okay. crazy because it's like twenty minutes away from you. <laughs> like, okay. What are they Less doing? Less than that because I think uh, I think uh, Los Alamitos, which is like ten minutes away, I think they operate on uh, whatever OC does. So. Oh, good God, that's right. Los Al is like right there. You're on. You're like. Yeah. You're on the border of oh, crazy yeah. town. You don't got to tell me. There's something happening at the Lakewood Mall like every other week now, and that's like literally five minutes down the street from me. Crazy town? Like, come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. Come, my butterfly. <laughs> More Shoot, like people baby. protesting in the streets. Like, this was the reopen protest in Huntington Beach. Oh, I had one of those at the Lakewood Mall like a couple days ago where uh, dudes weren't wearing masks. They had American flags out, recall Newsom stations, and I was like, you fucking knobs. <laughs> God. Right. Good like, what, God. What's happening? Yeah. I don't even know, man. But you know what? It's like everywhere is Ohio now. Yeah. <laughs> could be worse. Everywhere could be Florida. Oh, man. We should build a wall around Florida. I want to say that's where all this ends. Like, we're going to build a giant wall around Florida, or we're going to put them in a dome. <laughs> a bubble. Yeah, we're going to put them in like a Stephen King dome. Yeah. Or a Simpsons oh. movie dome, if that's your preference. Yes, yes, a Simpsons movie dome. Simpsons movie. movie. Um, do, 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 do. Can't wait for NBA Bubble 2K21 though. That game's going to be awesome. Huh? Yeah, that, that's like, where everyone's that in That story mode should be one to watch. And by the way, why aren't the NBA players like on, on a Big Brother camera, like where we can just watch them like a reality show? There like, is a Twitter doing? account called NBA Bubble uh, that's pretty good. They are they're like kind of curating all the stuff that is being created because like Taco Fall was on a bicycle. You know what's really okay, weird? Okay, that sounds fun. You know what's really weird about this? The NBA bubble is exactly where Extra Life United has been held for the past two years. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I keep seeing these shots of people, like, in front of the Coronado Resort. That place. And I'm like, I've been right there. Like, I'm like, wait. So, this is what we're... That's the grand plan? Is that we're going to turn Disney Springs into a, <laughs> a basketball bubble? <laughs> And expect that, like, no one's going to get sick in a place with spiking cases? Okay. And then they'll all be quarantined. Oh, well, 
what's happening? Like Russell Westbrook, like he's not Westbrook. Alive. Westbrook tested positive. You know who, Somebody else did yesterday too. Yeah. You know who else? Uh, the rumor is is positive, but because like you know hype hype laws and like you don't you don't have to disclose if you're sick or whatever. Right. James Harden. Because Harden believe, hasn't he hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, he hasn't reported. So yeah, you gotta think he's probably got it too. Baseball's supposed to start in like a week. And it's like, dude, like, like half of the players aren't showing up. It's like, who's even going to follow the baseball season? Unless Why you're are we that doing desperate. this? Like, just stop. Like, just, it's money. I get it's money. If you're just that desperate stop. for sport, just watch professional wrestling, which is never, which is not taking a week off, even though oh. against all common sense. I know, I know David's like, just like, rub, like rubbing his temples right now, like in frustration that that whole thing. Man, is. I, did you hear that? Like the WWE wrestlers are asking the dirt sheet reporters who's positive because WWE won't tell them who's tested. Even though you can tell just by who's not on TV right now. Yeah. Like, oh, Otis hasn't shown up in two weeks. Gee, I wonder why. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. <laughs> He hasn't been a big part of their TV lately. Gee, no, so he's coincidentally taken two weeks off. This is also exposing some of the um, less laudatory sides of some of my ba- favorite wrestlers. Like it's come out that Daniel Bryan is like maybe kind of sort of an anti-vaxxer. I'm like, come on, Daniel Bryan. We already have AJ Styles touting flat earth nonsense. Don't you? Oh, yeah. That 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 whole circus is just a whole other kettle of fish. Uh, is he do. like a complete anti-vaxer, or is it just that he's afraid of the COVID vaccine? We don't know. We don't know if he's a complete anti-vaxer. Like we know that AJ Styles is a total flat earther. Which... <laughs> you know what's great though? Daniel Bryan confronted him about this in a live interview, and AJ. Styles, I remember that. Usual. <laughs> I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just saying there's some stuff. You should look into it. There's that's some the stuff theory. about the flat earth theory. That, that's the conspiracy theory. It's automatically retort. Like, I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just saying I've heard some stuff. Like, that's oh. like Joe Rogan every episode. Yeah, of, exactly. Of well, it's like podcast. Kyrie Irving for a while there. Because Kyrie Irving was a flat earther too, awesome. Yeah. He still is. Like, he still is. That's right. Like, AJ Styles flies on a plane all the time. Has he hey, not seen the horizon? The we don't claim <laughs> Kyrie Irving. He, he left. He asked to leave. So we we're like, we gladly let him leave. Yeah, and it turned out he he turned out to be a team killer, which you know, it's a good thing he left when he did. I mean, it's not like we he, we we didn't get anything good out of the deal, but he, <laughs> like it's turned into. He nothing. rejoined the Celtics after his injury, and they got worse. They missed sure. the playoffs when he came back. Yeah, but his first and they all game, started suddenly fighting on the on the bench. His first game back in Cleveland, Gordon Hayward's ne- legs just snapped. Uh, that, really? whole, that whole thing was kind of snake bit that year. Yeah, so, like, that was weird. And then, yeah, he didn't even play in the playoffs against the Cavs because he was hurt. Baseball and basketball right now just seems like a bad idea. It, it's a horrible Everything. idea. Like, sports. It's, it goes back sports. to what I was saying earlier. Like, at one point, we were like, these are the essential things, and this is the stuff we need to focus on as a society, and we need to make more masks. I still can't buy an N95 mask. Like, months later. Bunch of nurses in Ohio can't either. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I know that I, I, I don't need an N95 mask, but the fact that no one can get them, that it's, like, so hard to find that there's only, like, states that are still brokering deals for these supplies, and most of them are made in China. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a disaster. And, like, a slow motion one. I was, like, I, just, I was talking to my brother about this. I was, like, it's like watching the Hindenburg in slow motion. That's like been all of 2020. And it's only going to get worse because like we've been able to burn like the last three, four months with like all this new TV and all these like streaming movies that are coming out. What happens when that well runs dry? I start streaming F-Zero mm-hmm. X Death Race every night. <laughs> we Sounds like another late-night army coming up. We had, we had someone tune mm-hmm. in. And I, you know, I, I, I called out my, ch- my, uh, my chat because they were being very quiet, right? And he's like, oh, my bad, Asif. I'm eating dinner while I watch. And I'm like, that's how you know people run out of Netflix stuff. They're sitting there watching me play F-Zero X Death Race instead of Netflix. I was gonna watch all of Netflix. The first part of your sentence was such an F-Zero fan. Like, and we had someone tuned in. We did. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I am the number we one F-Zero one live stream. In the world, 
I had you more know. viewers than anyone else. That's something. Hey, it's been better I'm... than nothing. Yeah. There was one other person streaming F Zero X last night. It's better, it's better than Peacock. <laughs> I had more viewers Hopefully than I got the, the Peacock platform. Dollars for that. Yeah, you got bamboozled there, dude. Yeah, I really did. That's dude, almost that as is, bad as Apple TV Plus. That is almost immediate buyer's remorse for me right there. This psych movie better be good. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> There's a psych movie? Of course there is. There's a new psych movie. That's, that's the only reason I paid the 30 bucks. Six seasons in a movie for psych, Blake. Six, six seasons in two wow. seasons. Well, I oh, guess yeah, by the way, before the community it, movie happens. By the way, community. <laughs> well, there's your review. That bad, bad, huh? What do you no, think? Holy great. shit. It's just like it's, it's like fine. The show's fine. Starts out season one, mighty fine. Kind of funny. Season two, pretty funny. Season three, eh, okay. Four. They just drive it off a cliff. And then Five, they have the balls to retcon season four and just be like, oh, there was a gas leak. At was that fi- point, I like, Yahoo fuck this season? show. Why did I watch Six. that whole fucking season when you're just going to retcon it? Fuck you guys for doing that. They retconned that. it because the Russo brothers were in charge of the fourth season instead of Dan Harmon. And slight spoilers for this show, but what they did – to Jeff Winger's character in season four is unforgivable. I don't like it at all. No, I don't like that either. I don't like what they did to him there, and I don't like how they treat mental health on that show. They just joke about mental health left and right, but Chang? That dude's got problems. Like, that guy probably should have been helped at some point instead of just made fun of for six seasons. It's also imaginary, right? So none of these people are real. Oh, but like... Uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm just it's saying. It's imaginary? That's your argument? It's an imaginary it's the third show. One, it's it the third one. The <laughs> it's the third one. Oh, That's like no. the, it's the third one of defending sitcoms right there. Oh, some people act weird and crazy. Look at 30 Rock. Everybody on there was like mentally ill. Well, it's all that, just didn't that act. eventually end up being a dream? And then they destroy oh. the freaking campus every year. Or, or it, You know what? Community would be better if it was just paintball episodes. There. I said <laughs> it. Maybe. I can't. There. That's, there's that my out. conclusion. There's my thesis. And yeah. I've watched oh. all six seasons. And let me tell you, season six, I was falling asleep during those episodes. They Remember were... when Yahoo used to get exclusives? Exclusive TV. Yeah, what the hell was that? Yeah, that was a hell of a phase we went through. Well, and, and just Abed became too meta. It just became too meta. It became too fourth wall breaking nonsense. You know what? Yeah. Let's let's forget about the things that we don't like. Let's talk about what we like and let's get Sunny those night court. Let's get those night court syndication I, rights. Awesome. I will say that as much as I got conned on Peacock. HBO Max is worth it. I, I, I like what, I, what I've seen out of HBO Max so far. Is it different than Go? Uh, yes. I've had, I had to pay for HBO Max, but because, I, but because I'm a sucker and I subscribed to DC Universe a year ago, uh, I got a discounted rate. Good God. How many, how many things are you subscribed to right now? All of them, Asif. No. <laughs> not, not YouTube TV, though, right? Well, no, no, no. I'm, I, mean, yeah, I, have, I have my limits. They upped that shit to 65 a month. And I was like, goodbye. I left at 55. But this is 65? For what? Because they added Nickelodeon? They started charging $10 more a month? Hey, SpongeBob is good. It's, it's you know not what? worth it to cut the cord anymore. You might as well just subscribe to cable at this That's point. That's what I was going to say. Like, I hate Maslin K- Cable TV. Like, our stupid internet provider, horrible. But now, their TV platform is actually competitive. We've gone the whole full circle. Of cutting the cord now. We have gone completely full circle. Where the services, the streaming services, cost more than just having TV and a DVR. Yeah, basically. <coughs> terrible that's it. it's trash they should be ashamed of themselves keep watching sunny what are you doing i know i don't know why I, I so after community i'm like so sick of watching any serial television right now that i'm just like i'm taking a break 
I've been watching David Letterman interviewing people. I've been watching just YouTube videos of Norm McDonald on Conan. Because, like, he might be the best talk show guest of all time. Like, I know he said some stupid things, but he's You can funny. always watch Holy Moly. I need to – okay, I, there's, a, there's <laughs> another thing. At, at my darkest time during the pandemic, I watched F-Zero GP Legend on YouTube. That's on YouTube? Yeah. Huh. It was terrible. <laughs> I, I I believe it. There's a reason you don't hear a lot about it. But it was still better than season four <laughs> of Community. Oh! <laughs> Are you going to watch Clone High at least, Asif? I don't know. I need some time. I need, I, I need to, <sighs> Just I need to Sunny. heal. I need it's to heal decade. from watching Sunny. this Sunny nonsensical... Is loosely serial, dude. You can no, watch. Sunny is good, but yeah. I needed to take a break from just even the concept of binge watching after watching Community. It's broken me that much. You can keep watching Sunny. Uh, watch What We Do in the Shadows, which is really good. Yeah, What We Do in the Shadows is great. I'm pretty uh, sure we have a Colin Robinson at the office somewhere. <laughs> Talking um, about Greg? <laughs> I was going to name names. <laughs> we love you, Greg. <laughs> no, for real. Like Greg and I, uh, Greg and I teamed up on something t- today that uh, we can't talk about yet, but it's coming soon and it's going to be really awesome. So. Nice, nice. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I do need to finish Sunny. I need to catch up on Sunny. That's that's the goal now. Uh, but I have been watching. I watched. Uh, I watched the Rob Reiner, Mel Brooks comedians in cars get getting coffee with uh, Seinfeld. That was a really good episode. I uh, watched some Chappelle stuff. Uh, my wife watched the Eric Andre stand-up thing on Netflix, and she said oh, it. Uh, she said it literally ends with his balls hanging out. So. Oh my goodness! She's like, once you get to like the like to two minutes before it ends, to stop. <laughs> <laughs> good God! Oh man, I'm not. I don't know. I, I guess I should watch that. I don't know. I don't. I've been watching some Bill Burr. Going back and watching like some old George Carlin, just like stand up. That man was That's great. Nice. Like yeah. his his routines are still funny. Yeah, he holds up. Yeah, he holds up. Uh, Richard Pryor holds up a lot. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield, yeah, like all of his stuff is still funny, and so I, I've really gotten into watching uh, Bill Burr and listening to his podcast. Bill Burr is great. Have you watched F is for Family? Yes, really funny yeah. show. There was a new season of that that came out recently, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know if you'd like it though because, like, you know, it's like the f- what fourth season, and they brought in. The uh, guy that played the Russo uh, brothers to ruin it? No, no, no. The <laughs> the 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 guy that played the Mike Mikey on Breaking Bad, who they brought in for season five of Community. Yeah, what was that all about? Why did they bring uh, Ermin Trout into Community? That know, was a I hail mary pass that like I didn't get. I was like, I don't know. that's who you got. You went from Chevy Chase. And Childish Gambino okay. to Ermin Trout. I think that cast was pretty happy to get rid of Chevy Chase, though. I yeah. get it. I get it. Er, Chevy Chase, total piece of crap, whatever. Funnier than everyone else on that show. Come on. Okay, the D&D episode with him and uh, David, what was it, David Cross? Uh-huh. Come on, that was a good episode where they're interrogating the, where he's interrogating the goblin. And stuff like that. The D and D episodes are okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. What about? Did you not like the video game episode? Which one did was you that? not see the video game I episode? I saw the video game episode. I'm just not. He's trying uh, to forget. He's trying to forget a lot of community. Was that at season this point. three? I think that was or was, four. I can't remember. What about... I've really uh, tried to block out season four. It made me like, yeah. violently angry after every episode, basically. You didn't like the Floor is Lava episode? No. What, what about Meow what? Meow Beans? Meow Meow Beans is a great episode. <sighs> what about the Floor is Lava on Netflix? <laughs> so yeah, the Meow, Meow, Meow Meow Beans... Here's a, the show would be better if it was just Meow Meow Beans. 
That is a really good episode. If it was just meow meow beans and paintball, it would have I would have been fine with this show. I like the meow meow beans episode a lot. Um, uh, you didn't like the you didn't like the fake bottle episode, right? Where they do all the remember when we did this, and it's like stuff that they never did on. The yeah, show. the fake clip show. No, hated that. Oh man, I love. Why that you gotta episode. do a fake clip show, man? Clip shows suck. Fake clip shows even suck even more. What about the VR episode? I know you said you didn't like any of the uh, Amazon episodes, but or Yahoo episodes. But I thought that was a pretty good one, where the dean gets like a yeah, VR. It was, it was. Then they added that guy. The VR Keith guy. David? Oh my God! Come on, back off, man. That's Keith David. Keith I know, motherfucking but like, David. That's, He's going to be good in anything. No. I refuse to believe that there is anything bad circling about back Keith to David spawn. or that Keith David ever did. Also, Gargoyles. Thank you. And they live. Okay. Come on. No. No bad. No. Keith David, no bad. No. No. Saints no. Row, Keith David. Yeah, Saints Row, Keith David as well. See? Look at all the great things Keith David has done for you. And you're just sitting there like, everything sucks. Man, I'm gonna take I'm not you, saying I'm gonna buy sucks. you a pack of cloves and take you shopping at Hot Topic. Because <laughs> I don't like season four be, through six. You'd be like, the oh, community sucks and everything's horrible. Cloves? Yeah, time to get you some. You're gonna like a goth. I'm, I'm a goth. <laughs> like a goth. Because I don't like gonna, community. Because you think it all sucks. Yes. I don't think it all sucks. <laughs> I think I was We're picturing clear. Austin as a goth is kind of funny. Yeah, it me is. as a goth smoking cloves with a hot top. I can't fit in those schmedium shirts that they have at Hot Topic. Yeah, They're no, it's cool. XL just, oh there. my god, two <laughs> XL is like a medium. You'll just put some fishnet on underneath them. The like sizes at Hot Topic are a little wonky. Yeah. I will say yeah. that. They're all schmedium cuts. They got like the, the, the thin cut. And I there's nothing no. There's nothing thin cut about this shirt that I'm wearing right now. So no the hot topic, no. And the clothes, no. It's just the community's not that good. It's okay. Okay. Well It's not bad. I just don't Watch think it's one. Of, I don't think it can like sit atop the the land of sitcoms. That, I feel like the image of Austin as a goth is a good pre- it's a good place to end this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enough. that's fair. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good breaking off point. Uh, so yeah, we'll do our usual wrap up. Uh, you should go to shacknews.com to read Blake's review of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, there's also long reads there most recent one i think on the life is strange uh franchise right david life is strange and uh game development during covid oh that's right and then uh there's also a doom eternal one there yeah go to the long read section and doom 64 oh that's right doom i remember doom 64 i remember doom 64 it's better than doom eternal whoa 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 wow champions wow wow (laughs) wow you really think that yeah Game Did you beat Doom? You beat Doom Eternal, right? No. No? Nope. Wow. Fell off. In part because Resident Evil 3 came out, but I just didn't feel like going back to it. I'm gonna go back. That's a game I have to beat before the end of the year. I think it's Year of the Games in December is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. man. Especially yeah. if Cyberpunk comes out. Yeah. If which is a big if. Yeah, right. Perform some I love I love that Assassin's Creed release date. They're just looking, they're staring dead at the eye of Cyberpunk. They're like it's like a game of chicken, like who's gonna crash first? But they, they, they probably had that date in mind all along, and then once they saw Cyberpunk move in, they're like, We're not moving. <laughs> yeah. I'm staying. I'm having my coffee. I'm releasing my date. Uh so yeah. Uh, there's a rumor Hideo Kojima might be in Cyberpunk, which would make sense because everybody is in Cyberpunk. Except Jeff for Jeff Keighley. Keighley. Just don't yep. let him design any of it. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what, David? <laughs> the combat in Death Stranding might be better than the combat in Cyberpunk 27. You fight while you're picking up all the shit you dropped while climbing up the mountain or after? David, these are what? the people who made The Witcher 3. Yeah, that's a pretty great interactive book. <laughs> Just saying, like, <laughs> do you remember the gameplay of that game? 
Yeah, they were so bad they patched it out. <laughs> so, yeah, and... now they're making a first person game. Oh, I like first person choose your own adventure books. So, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, I'm not throwing shade at Cyberpunk. David is hardcore. Yep. Um, just for the folks at home. Uh, you can also find us on Twitch, Shack News on Twitch. Uh, you can sub to us there with Jeff Bezos' money. You attach your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime. And you go to the Shack News and you click the sub button. You give us Jeff Bezos' money for free. It costs you nothing. You can do it every month. So go do that. Uh, we're also on uh, YouTube. We got two channels there, Shack News Games and Gamer Hub Videos. Uh, that's a really easy way to support us. You can just watch those videos for free and we get ad revenue from that. Uh, if that's not enough supporting of Shack News, you can go to shacknews.com. You can click on my dog on either side of the articles and sign up for Shack News Mercury. That unlocks no ads on the site, but then also uh, a ton of different things like shirts and hoodies and eternal gratitude. Like, I don't know. I, the the thousand dollar tier says a Shack News special event, but pretty much every one of our events has been canceled this year. So I don't know what we're going to do. For our for our ludicrous subs, but thank you, Rom Steady and Hammer Suit and Electrally, for being just the toppest of top boys. And can you imagine giving Shaq News a thousand dollars a year for a sub? It's crazy. We love them; they're amazing. Uh, so those are those are the ways to support us and find us. Uh, we are an internet company, and the people listening to this are probably on the internet. So if you are listening to us probably through a series of tubes and let's say you you found this on youtube or something or or you found this on chatty our forum click the link for the article before you react to it actually listen to the podcast before you talk smack about it or comment on our youtube video because this will go up on youtube as well actually consume the content before you react and share it because in 2020 right now you might be sharing fake news. So if you actually read the article, you could prevent the sharing of fake news. You could also go sexy build the cameraman's extra mile and vet the story. Find a second source that actually confirms it. Question your sources in 2020. Otherwise, you'll be a jabu for not wearing masks. So please, oh. just click the link. Do it for Shaq News. We, we really... I've been begging people to do this for years now, and clearly they're not listening. Things are getting worse. I will say this. The funniest thing that happened in the interim, Donald Trump's tweets have started being labeled as misinformation. So that's kind of great. Twitter's like, get the facts on voting. This has been marked. It's like, what, he was like threatening violence in one tweet? Like, oh, they're doing something over there. They're trying. But when the president oh is frequently peddling misinformation, now more than ever is it important to actually question the source. Agreed. Uh, and wear a fucking mask, for the love of God. That's it. That's the show. Thanks, guys. Blake, do you want to sing a song? Oh, it's a beautiful, wonderful shot cast. It's a fantastic kind of podcast. We had lots of laughs and we had lots of cries. We're giving in a post-apocalyptic world and we're all gonna die. But not today. No, no. We're doing just great today because there's a new episode of the Shack Cast. It's season three, episode two. Hundred nine hundred seven and eight. It's the Shack Cast, and we're all just doing great. Oh yeah, it's the Shack Cast, and we're all just doing great. <laughs> Yay! Yay.